Okay, I think we're ready to begin and for people on the live stream. Uh, this is the ninth uh, public teaching workshop from the Keshe Foundation and we're having a special on Fukushima and solutions for Fukushima. And uh, we have Mr. Keshe on the Skype call along with uh, uh, Elia, uh, Dr. Elia Kostova and uh, s several uh, Japanese uh, guests and a translator in order to um, get the, uh, the message and the conversation going with the Japanese. And the workshop will be in three basic parts. The first part will be uh, uh, the talk and discussion with Mr. Cash. Then there'll be a movie that he's prepared um, that we'll present on the screen. We'll watch that for 45 minutes. And then the last part of the session will be um, with the Japanese uh, who will be coming online at that point. To, they'll have questions and there'll be a translation thing going on. So that's the basic synopsis. And I guess I'll let uh, Mr. Cash, would you like to start off and say something about that? Okay, we have um, dedicated this session to Fukushima and at the same time uh, once you watch the video, especially the last five minutes of the video, um, you will understand the, the course which the Foundation has set. The last um, five minutes of this video, which is about 45 minutes, I think is the most important part of the whole video where we set the roadmap and the reason why we set the roadmap for the Foundation for 2014. Um, I try to speak very slow because I know the translation is done in the background. I would like, uh, if possible, Kyoko to explain the situation in Fukushima from a Japanese point of view, as she left Tokyo since the accident, because of the reasons she has regarding the situation. Could I ask uh, Kyoko to explain the situation, please, from the Japanese point of view? Are you there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Sorry, um, I'm very apolog deeply apologize that there is some problem in the Japanese translation channel. Um, yes. yes, could you give us a second? to figure out this problem. Thank you very much. There okay. is a many, many I, Japanese uh, participant I, audience I, are expecting to hear your um, I, I announcement. Try, I try to speak a couple of minutes and then you come back because you are important okay. in this discussion as Thank a Japanese. You Thank when you, you are ready, much. come back and just, just come in. Don't ask uh, for time. Okay. I'm coming back <clears> then. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So what it is, we we have changed the situation and we are trying to um, use the Fukushima accident in opening the technology for, uh, for world public. As I said, this technology will touch the life of every being on this planet and we start showing it how and why and the things which are in the background. Um, we understand the situation from contamination point of view, but at the same time we understand the problem with the Japanese government and other governments who have to handle contamination. In a recent past, uh, we know that Fukushima is an accident-induced accident uh, nuclear, nuclear contamination. contamination. But, but now, now we, we have, have we know the situation, situation with, with Niger, Niger nuclear, nuclear what, what uranium, uranium mines, mines, which has been, been done by the, by the French, French nuclear, nuclear industry, industry. Um, and the, the contamination has been running there, there for a long, long time. time. Now, now we are aware, aware of the uh, uh, contamination, contamination during the um, um, tests, tests of uh, warheads, warheads, nuclear warheads, different, different part, part of the law. 
we now the, the our report in, in Iraq that the contaminated uranium dust and air pollution has reached Iraq and towards Iran. It's been denied by Iranian um, agencies in the past 24 hours. Uh, but um, this this um, contamination of radioactive materials are part of the process which happening in Sahara condition in Africa okay. by the mining of the uranium in Niger. Uh, and um, when the wind comes, the sand storms go anywhere from um, the Atlantic Ocean up to uh, Persian Gulf. Depends where the sun lands. So we try to find a solution collectively for us as a human race. Uh, I'm sure the, the situation will not end with this accident. We will have accidents in the future. And so we set the scene that this can be used, the technology, for every aspect. We have, at the same um, time, other contaminations like land contaminations and water contaminations in in China rivers and uh, uh, industrial lakes in Russia, which during the um, Soviet time uh, there are lakes which no fish exist in them. I've been to them. I've seen them, where all the pollution has been sent to these lakes without any consideration over years, and um, we see the same kind of things all over the world. So maybe this technology is a small step towards correcting what we have done to ourselves on this planet. Um, this opens a totally new research, and this is what we've been trying to do from the beginning, to divert the focus only on energy of the Cash Foundation research in the space. Now the decontamination, the health, the motion, the use and creation of new materials, one by one, in a very hidden by subtle way, we have opened up the technology to world population. The purpose is now that we have a bigger picture of the technology, it's time to open the technology worldwide. I ask those who have built reactors, and they've been asking me how and how you make the materials. Listen to the tape, the video which is going to be released today. Understand the process. Just don't mimic it, don't copy it. I know for a fact a number of scientific organizations around the world are waiting for this video. We've been told, we've been in touch with certain officials and um, governments and scientists are looking into this production of new nanomaterials in a simple way. If you can use these materials in a correct way, you have produced your energy units. If you can produce these reactors and the ones we have shown, you have you can start your own systems for pollution. You can start your own systems for a space technology, and in time and through your own work, through peaceful means, we can start the process of walking away from wars and hunger. You will see how we attract the nuclear materials from the land. Now, develop technologies which you can produce food, you can produce nourishment. It looks like we temporarily lost Mr. Cash there. Uh, bear with us for a moment. Yes, I'm sure that we are all aware that uh, this is a sensitive issue for a lot of people. And um, we might run into this kind of situation a few times throughout this uh, workshop. So everybody, just please be patient. Yes, can you hear me? Yeah, you know there are systems we yes. warn you. That, uh, there is a possibility 
there is a possibility that the system will be interfered with. So they managed to shut the, what do you call it, the internet for a, just to break it right at the right point. So um, uh, what I was trying to say, and I carry on with it, is that um, we, we will, through this technology, allow people to start developing and helping themselves. Um, there are pressures which are put on the foundation in past few weeks to, to curtail the work of the foundation. And in due course, we announced the steps which has been taken by governments to, to, to pressurize us. But I have put enough information out in this new video how you can use the technology, if you understand it, in a very safe way to, um, to develop simple technologies for, uh, for food, for medicine, for um, production of materials. And at the same time, decontaminate um, the Fukushima accident. Uh, the situation in Fukushima, to a scientist like me, even though it's horrendous what has happened, has been an opportunity to be able to open the technology. And we will carry on doing this. We will carry on teaching. Maybe um, today, um, Kyoko, uh, will start her first, uh, what I call, um, uh, public workshop, because as you know, she's a knowledge seeker. She will join us in the next two weeks. I have already met with her here in Italy, and um, she will be, and this will be the way the workshops by the knowledge seekers where their own language will be conducted. So, this workshop, the ninth workshop, which is a lucky workshop, will become the springboard for the knowledge seekers. So these kind of workshops will be on a weekly basis in your own national languages, or on different languages which will be put up on the YouTube channels of the Foundation for others to listen or to translate, because each scientist will take and will disclose what they understood from that week or that session or that time in the foundation. The spread of the knowledge is free and we carry on doing the same. I would like to know if we got our Kyoko back online yet or are we still have to wait for her? Hello. Hi Kyoko, are you back? Can you, can, yes, are you ready? Um, hello. Yes, um, hello, hello. Can you hear yes. me? Okay, first of all, uh, let me apologize to all Japanese audience. There is some uh, critical technical problem today. Somehow, we have been rehearsing many times and it's been okay, but somehow it's happened. So please let me apologize. And then we would like to uh, make a translation in this channel. Is it okay? Yes. 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 Uh, you got to realize Japanese government is fully aware of this disclosure. So the way I got kicked out, you, you it will happen a few times in this presentation. Um, so um, do not worry, we can carry on line by line. Um, if it's possible, um, I would like Kyoko to speak in both Japanese and in English, translating what she said, to explain the situation in Fukushima from the Japanese point of view, and to explain her own situation. Thank you very much. I stand by. 
まず日本の皆様、えっと、どうか安心してください、えっと、私のコンタクト、私のレポートはすべて日本政府の方に届いており、えっと、そちら、それが日本政府側で受領されたことは確認しております。今回、このようなワークショップを、えー、と日本語と英語の両方で、えー、と確認するような形で皆様に、えー、とお届けする方が確実かと思いますので、今回はこの方法で皆さんに、えー、とお届けしていきたいと思います。Thank you very much. Can I, can I just ask one question, Rick?、Um, can, is this session being recorded on your site fully? Yeah, but can you download it to be kept separate out of the live stream that we can put it on the YouTube, please? Okay, thank you. Go ahead, Kyoko. Okay, okay yes.、Um, I already have many, many questions from the Japanese.、Uh, Japanese、uh, Audience, so please let me ask、uh, one by one. First no, of all, can I, can, I, can I ask you, Kyoko, to、oh, introduce yes, yes. yourself, who you are, and why you are here, and、um, the, what、okay. you understand from the Fukushima situation, please? As a no, I told Kyoko San Ni and Godi Singa, don't a key day to Kokoni Tatil no Kauko says, made a Dakitai to my mas. Yes. Um, I'm,、uh, hello, everyone. My name is Yukako.、Uh, I'm currently living in Italy and then I'm going to be one of the、uh, researchers in the Spaceship Institution from February. えー、と皆様、こんにちは。私は斉藤優香子です。現在、イタリアに在住しておりまして、えー、と結社財団の方で研究員として働くことになっていました。あなっています。I have been、uh, mainly researching about the food issue and food and health, and then education for the children, and, and based on the,、um, how to protect themselves and how to balance out their mind and their you know,、um, physical health、uh, by food.、Mm. 私の、えー、とバックグラウンドとしては、主に、えー、と食、それから食文化に関わる研究をやっておりまして、えー、とそれがどういった形で心と体の、えー、健康に影響を及ぼすかというところを主に研究してまいりました。And then I have a great opportunity to join this、uh, Kesha、uh, Foundation. And then、um, I'm seriously, as, a,、um, my, as myself, Yeah. yeah, can you explain where you are from and why? What's the reason you're in Italy? Okay,、um, I'm, 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 I'm originally from,、uh, I'm born in Tokyo and living in Tokyo. And then since I had this、uh, earthquake, I moved away from Japan with two, my little children to Italy. And then I started to research about you, all this. You have、evil. to allow. You have to allow the translator to translate. I was t a l k i n g about the Tokyo de Sodachimasta. Italian Kita Kikakeva, Higashin Honda Shinsayo, Kikaketo Ste, Eto, Jisani Sokokara, Hinan Surkataji, Italian Iju Stat, UK Narimas. The reason you left Japan is because of the Fukushima accident. Yes, so、uh, I could convince that there is something very unpredictable, in, unpredictable thing is happening. And then we, I couldn't take any risk for my children. And then、uh, I, I immediately decided to move it away. But I was really lucky.、Uh, I, I can say myself, I was really lucky to take those kind of action. And then I feel like、um, I really have to do something for all the Japanese you know, people to figure out this you know, serious situation and from outside of Japan. But、I'm, my heart is always in, Jap- in Tokyo. So, and, and this is the great you, opportunity to do the case. Can you let this translate to translate line by line? <laughs> えとこの、まあ、あの実際に福島のえっと、事故が起きたときに今後
どんなことが起きるか予断を許さないという背景で、えー、と私は幸運にもイタリアに移住することができましたが、えー、日本の、えー、とやはり残った皆様のことそして今後の日本のことに関していつもあの心を砕いております。Yes. So、um, it's a great opportunity for me to join the k e s h i f Foundation. And then this is my first workshop. And I'm, I, I, I'm really sorry for this technical problem, but I will try to do my best. Thank you very much. この、えー、と決勝財団で働くことができたことは本当に幸運なことであり、えー、とこういったワークショップを開くこともできたこともとても感謝しています。あの冒頭の,あの技術的な問題を本当に心からお詫びいたしますが、えー、とここから、えー、とぜひ私としてもベストを尽くして皆さんにあの有益な情報をお届けしたいと思います。どうぞよろしくお願いいたします。Can I ask you what is the feeling in Japan regarding the accident from your point of view?、It's... えー、とあなたの視点から見て、今、えーと、福島、そして事故関連で日本人の心象としてはどのようなものが想定されますか I think、um, you would be surprised if you could have a chance to visit Tokyo or you know, some city in Japan.、Uh, people are quite you know, walking normally, living normally. It seems like、uh, we have no fear. Uh, of the radioactive, but the problem is this you know, radioactive is all invisible, and then and all this you know,、um, important information is really hidden and is,、um, how can I say, We can, there is no、uh, reliable information source、uh, for the Japanese people right now. Even the, the announcement from the government and then in TEPCO also. えっと、もし博士が日本に実際、えー、と今日来る機会があったとしたら非常に驚かれると思うんですけど日本の人たちはあの極めて平静に何事もないかのように日常を送っております。それはあのやはりあの必要な情報正しい情報というのがマスコミを通じてきちっと報道されていないというところで本当の事実というものは、えー、と日本の人たちには伝わっていないというのが現状であると思います。And also I, what is most important now for us is to get the, you know,、um, real information and with the international point of view Then we have to be very objective about、uh, our situation. やはりあのとても大事なことというのはそのグローバルの視点から、えー、と本当の事実を知ってそして現在の状況というのを把握してこれから何をすべきかということを日本人もあのきちっと知るということが大切だなと考えています。In this sake,、um, I have already had many, many、uh, questions for you、uh, to Kesha Foundation about how you. Really recognize our situation and how you, you know,、uh, what kind of danger we actually face in to right now. 今日という日に、えー、と合わせて日本の、えー、視聴者の方からたくさんの質問をいただいています。で、この質問を、えー、ときっかけに、えー、と日本の皆様に正しい情報、そして今後どういうふうにアクションが必要とされるかというのを明確にしていきたいと考えています。Okay, let me give you a piece of news if you don't know, you might know today.、Mm-hmm. Um, the present situation. 知らない情報と思われることをちょっとご紹介していきたいと思います。This is,、uh, this is what has been released by TEPCO. Uh, in the past、um, 24 hours, 48 hours. In the past 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 24 In the past 24 hours, 48 hours. Housing containing the reactor number one. Eto, Ima Genzai, Eto, Hosha no, Eto, 
活動状況についてのレポートがあります。The water leaking out of the pressure vessel is 2000 MSVs, which is 2000 milli MSVs. Any, uh, any exposure to this level can kill a man within hours. And now, for the first time, we understand why the waters are collected and kept in these huge containers. The water collected from the pressure w a t they are trying to keep the reactor cool is leaking out, and they're collecting this leakage. That's why they're putting and collecting it. Now we understand the level of contamination outside the pressure vessel for the first time in the past 48 hours. 汚染水の状況は、えー、と極めて予断を許さない状況になっておりまして、えー、と冷却を保つための、えー、と汚染水が、えー、と現在、えー、と外に、えー、と漏れ出している。The engineers who have gone into building one to send this little boat into the container building Cannot stand more than 15 minutes in the building. They receive their maximum dosage in 15 minutes. Saito san, just to これは翻訳のサポートをしていただいた方がいいと思います。えっと正確な数字をお伝えすることが大事だと思いますので。今出ている放射能量というのが、えー、おそらく15分ぐらい放射しているとあの、えー、人命に関わるレベル。So, for the first time, we have another glimpse into the level of radiation which is leaking out of reactor number one in the containment building in the waters which is getting extracted. And the levels are horrendously high. If five mil is enough for a man, You can imagine what is 2000 mil which is getting collected and kept in these tanks. 1号機から漏れてる、えー、と汚染水の濃度というのは、えー、と極めて高く、えーとまあ、5ミリエーシベルトが、えーとまあ、人の命を奪うのに十分だとしたら2000という数字がいかに、えー、と莫大なものかというのは皆さんもお分かりいただけるかと思います。I... Congratulate the、uh, um, Japanese scientists and nuclear engineers and even TEPCO in taking these kind of risks, putting their lives in danger to, to find a solution. And even for the leakage, which is now they found a few of them, is a cracked pipe and cracked containment building.、Um, these all need time, maybe two, three, five years before a solution can be found. まず私は何よりこの、えー、と事態収束にあたっている現場の作業員の方にあの心からの敬意を表したいと思います。この問題の解決にこれから、えー、と2年から、えー、と5年ぐらいの時間を要すると想定されるときに、えー、と現場の皆様の、えー、と努力というものは本当に必然に尽くしがたいものがあると思います。So we, in past 24 hours, 48 hours, We have another piece of information which is first hand directly from the containment building in reactor one. And、um, the, the situation is critical, but、uh, it hopefully can be managed and can be handled if another accident doesn't happen. えっと、現在、やはり1号機の状況というのは、えっと、非常に予断を許さない状況になっています。えっと、ただ、えっと、この現在の状況であれば、えっと、なんとかコントロールの範囲内、ただし、えっと、新たなアクシデントが起こった場合は、あの非常に厳しい状況になるということが想定されます。You can ask your questions. 何かご質問あればどうぞ。OK。So, um, so... Even with your technology, so as soon as we could 
implement in, in application make application of your technology to this situation do you think can we make a solution more like faster or more efficiently what I, what I advise to our Japanese listeners, because I know later on you'll have uh, people from the farming groups and everything else which is reorganized, is that when you see the video, when you see this uh, video, please do not go and jump and try to do it. Sit, think, and collectively as a group try to do this that is done correctly. えっと、今日私がえっと、皆さんにご紹介するビデオをえっと、今回こうご参加されているえっと、農業、それから放射能研究に関わる皆様たちにぜひお伝えしたいんですけども、あの、ぜひあの、落ち着いて例えば映像を
土地、えー、とそれから農地に関しては、えーと木えー、近隣の木に付着した、えー、と放射能が、えー、とさらにそれが、えーとまあ、水の循環システムに乗っかって、えー、と自然体系の中にかなり、えー、と回っているというふうに考えられます。The, my, my suggestion to TEPCO is put a, even a thin plastic or a canvas on top of these, top of these buildings to stop at least some of the radiation、um, becoming airborne. まず私が大事に、えー、と東京電力に対して提言したいのは、えー、とどのような、えー、と材質のもの素材のものでもいいので、えー、と露出している、えー、1235基にカバーをするということを、えー、と申し上げております。So what you clean in the land, what you clean with the water is getting partially recontaminated. But with this process, you can、uh, extract what is already in the land. So, I will show you the same thing. I will show you the same thing. I will show you the same thing. You can use the materials we show how to make in the video. To make filters even for your drinking water at home, you just put the material in、um, like a charcoal as part of the normal、uh, filter, and these will absorb most of the radioactive material which you could have in your drinking water. これから紹介する、まあ、放射能を、えっと、除去するフィルターというのは、素材としてはあの皆さんが日常の中で手に入れられるもので構成されています。それを使うことによって、えっと、汚染水からもあの安全に、えっと、有害な物質を除去することができます。My, my one piece of advice to the Japanese community is understand TEPCO and the Japanese government. They do not understand themselves what is going on and they are doing their best. So, partially, what you don't know is because they don't know themselves what is sitting in the box. えっと、まず、えっと、現在の状況は私から見る限り、えっと、問題に対処している東京電力自身が今の本当の現実の状況というのを理解していないと感じていますだからこそ本当に取るべき手段というのが取られていないのではないでしょうか。One thing, as、um, I have a lot of respect for the Japanese government and Japanese,、uh, what I call industry,、um, you had the pleasures of advancement having these power stations with、um, guaranteed energy. And now this accident happens, you have to understand there are some pitfalls. Which um, sign with um, economical advancements, for especially for a nation which is energy resource near zero of its own. えっとまあ、この事故が起きたことによって、やはり、えっと、エネルギー産業自体の在り方というものを根本的から見直す必要があるのではないかというふうに考えています。So now your problem has become our problem. And world scientists are there to find a solution, but there is no way we can find a total solution. なので、やはり、えー、と今回、このソリューションを提供するにあたっては、今後、どういった、えー、とアティチュード、えー、と態度を持って、この問題に、えー、と最初にしてきているか、その、えー、と一つの第一歩となりたいというふうに考えています。Next question. Yes.、Um, so I'm And the, the, you suggested、uh, radioactive removal uh, uh, method. Is,、uh, I really have to share a notification about the safety、uh, instruction in advance. And then, but it, as you mentioned, this is the, the way. To be easy to make、uh, application by the farmers, individual farmers. But it would be,、yeah. do you think it's、yeah. better to have a scientific scientist support or some professional support?、Um, the... We have put, we have put a note under the video. Read that note and translate it.、Uh, you need 
um, certain cautions to, precautions to take. You cannot just walk in and do the job. We advise like use tractors, do not um, handle things just with a, with a what do you call it, um, bare hands. Bare hands. Uh, yeah, the empty hands. You have to wear protective clothing. You need, we advise you to have uh, TEPCO people with you if it's possible uh, to advise you how to use these things, how to decontaminate. There is a process that in um, using these materials and the minerals which are in the water and the land, uh, you create a condition that most of these materials become deactivated. So what they become stable without much radiation leakage. We cannot disclose this and officially announce it. Um, but scientifically, we understand the, the position. Okay. あの、農家の方がここであの行うことができる除染ではあるんですけれども、あのやはり専門家の方のあの意見をちゃんと聞いた方がいいのかというところをお聞きしまして、あの必ずあの防護服などを身につけてあのきちんとそのセーフティこれ
、えー、この,あのご提案する方法除染方法は、まあ、あのさらなるあの汚染ということを引き起こすことはなくとてもあの簡単なプロセスになっております。Next question. Next question. Okay.、Um, also, there's a lot of、uh, question about、um, some internal、uh, explosion.、Uh, the Where? Many of the Japanese, I mean, internal body. So it, it already intake the radioactive, you know,、uh, materials. すでに内部被爆してしまった、えっと、人たちが、えっと、どのような対処をすればいいんでしょうかという質問になります。So is there any,、uh, any application? Can we apply your method to this kind of internal exposure problems also? You mean, you have, you mean if you have digested the radioactive materials? Yes, yes, like by the water or food mainly. And it's getting very, very. There is a way. There is a way that it's possible to decontaminate the body. Uh, this, um, this has never been done before, it's theoretical, but can be tested. This is harmless. If、um, you can、um, you can create an environment where、uh, you can make like、um, a bath or a Or a position where you can line in the material without coming in touch with it to stand in a water tank where, or be sitting in a, in a tub where the materials are within the close proximity of the body without touching it, where these materials can theoretically extract the.、Mm -hmm. The, the contamination out, but this is very, very theoretical, i s never been done, and、mm -hmm. it has other question marks about it. But in reality, at the moment, we cannot do such a thing. But in, in, in,、um, in the dynamic systems which you will see, there is a possibility to, to extract. Materials without、um, any, any damage to tissues, but this needs,、um, this needs a very advanced understanding of the technology. But at the moment, no. But there are possibilities within the next year, two years, it can be done. Okay, let me, let me translate it now. So, as a naive hibak or keta bawa i demo, this ne, mada kore wa jikke sare te wa i nain des kere domo, a no, si haka se no lil, o yo ste, a no, 適用することが可能かもしれませんと、えー、ある、まあ、状態、コンディションを作り出してあの磁場をあの利用することで、まあ、人間の体の中の有害物質を、えー、吸収、吸着するというようなあことが可能になるかもしれません。これはまあ実験を重ねていく必要があります。Thank you. But, but if you have,、um, If you have、um, developed any kind of cancer because of the accident, if you have developed abnormalities because of the contamination, because of the radioactive material, these cancers at this stage can be reversed. They are reversible. The technology is with the Cash Foundation how to target and reverse a cancer cell. Our cancer research is extremely advanced, and even we had data in past 48 hours which confirms us through a real、um, test case.、Mm -hmm. I think there is also lots of、uh, you know, abnormality. Do you want to translate? Yeah, I, I will.、Um, also, not only for the cancer,、uh, thyroid, thyroid problem or. Yes, the, yes, there are, there are, there are、okay. systems available which can do the job. Okay. 
、えーまあ、あのこの被爆で、えー、によってあのがんになってしまった場合というのは理論的にはこの,あの博士の、えー、技術を持って、えー、回復するということが可能になるかもしれませんと同じように甲状腺ですとか甲状腺異常ということにも対応できるかもしれません。Um, even if you have developed a certain type of cancers,、um, thyroid cancers, now you have experts in Japan who can remove the thyroid glands. Can be, can be helped or to slow down or to reverse. The technology is available. えーまあ、がんの進行を遅らせるですとか、えーまあ、本当にがんそのものを、えー、治すというようなこともあの技術的には、えー、と可能になってしてそのエキスパートが日本に、えー、い,らっしゃいるということを聞いています。OK。Can I move to that?OK、okay.。So... Uh, there is any priority for the radioactive removal application、uh, within the nuclear l a n d and marine and air? Can we make the application in, simultaneously or we have to do、yes. the process? One? No, 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 you can do it. You can even repeat the process if you want every few months because any new contamination can be withdrawn immediately. えー、除染の、えー、優先順位を聞いて、えー、特にあの土壌ですとか海洋ですとか、あのーえー、除染作業を進める順番というのがあるんでしょうかというふうにお聞きしましたところ、えー、同時に、えー、しかもあの定期的に、あのー、行うことができるそういう方法だとおっしゃっています。The, Thank you very much. The, the... the reality is that the Japanese government has to set up、um... Industry for the contamination and,、uh, and the industry for the contamination has been done with,、uh, as you see, the video to produce certain materials of certain size and the machinery which can retract these materials after contamination and recycle. This can be done within weeks by the government. まあ、なってしまっているのが、あのー、問題で、えー、ある特定の物質を使う、出されるとか、ある特定の方法を使うというようなことが、あのー、国によってアナウンスされているというのが問題だと言っています。So, the government, has, the government has to set up、uh, very much、uh, recycling continuous process. That for years the, the process can be used by farmers to retract any radioactive material from the farming land, from the waters, from the forest, which will be there for years and they'll be seeping through over years so they can be decontaminated、uh, from the air the same. So、uh, the government has to set up this simple process where, for example, they deliver the material. To the farmers or the delivery companies deliver the material to the cleaning and then they return it back for decontamination. But this has to become part of the natural life for, the, for, for Fukushima residents for years to come. あの福島の、まあ、本当に、えー、生態系あの、自然を取り戻すためにもあ、えー、放射能汚染除去に、えー、特定の物質を使うであるとか、まあ、持続不可能な方法を取るのではなくて、えー、私たちの手で、農家の人たちの手で、えー、地元の人たちの手で、えー、繰り返し行うことができるあの現実的な除染方法というのをやっていく必要があります。Thank you. Yes, what's the next question? Okay,、um, I have a several q u e s t i o n about, but this is more about the process of the radioactive removal. Yes. So, shall we, could you show us the video first and then probably we can get back to those questions? Do you think is it? Okay, okay. yeah, what I'm going to do,、um, Rick? Hello, Rick, are you online? 
what what I'm going to do, we are going to, we have, I'm, I'm going to go, go offline for, for two, two seconds, seconds to, to set, set the thing up and I come back, back yeah? yeah? If, if you, you want, want to talk or discuss anything, anything I'll, I'll be back, back on, on the um, Picoco. Picoco. Just, Just give, give me two minutes. minutes. オッケー。オッケー。オッケー。オッケー。オッケー。オッケー。オッケー。オッケー。オッケー。オッケー。オッケー。オッケー。オッケー。オッケー。オッケー。オッケー。オッケー。オッケー。オッケー。オッケー。
public, as we said in our mandate of 2014 roadmap. Priorities Fukushima and through Fukushima, we open new technologies. The situation which we are going to explain and the method is for the farmers themselves to be able to help themselves individually or as a collective. The cost to decontaminate does not run into less than maybe a thousand euros. Less than a thousand dollars. You can help yourself. And as this contamination is going to be continuous, so you can repeat the same thing every year before you cultivate. You can clean the water on a regular basis. At the same time, the technology will be explained how even TEPCO can clean up the new uh, contamination waters which are arriving in the station every day. The story of this new technology is very much the way we saw with what I call in the um, contaminations of the waters around Northern Europe too. So this technology can be used further on for land contamination and water contaminations around the world. We start to explain the fundamentals and then we go through it step by step. If we consider every element to be like a plasma, and that's how the shape of a plasma is. Earth, the sun, the moon, but different shape of it, different size of the plasma. What has happened, if we call for example this plasma, the plasma of uh, cesium or this plasma, plasma of another nuclear material or another contamination, each one has a certain dimension and certain amount of energy which we explain energy as gravity and magnetic field. So once we measure the gravitational field, magnetic field and the energy of the element, then we can easily understand how these things can be moved and extracted. One of the main points to understand about the work of the Keshe Foundation is that we are a space technology development. What this means? We have not developed this technology for Fukushima. We have not developed this technology for decontamination around the Earth. We have developed this technology to be able to capture these packages of magnetic gravitational fields in the space to be able to produce food or material in deep space. As it says, we are very much involved in development of the man in the space and not the production of material for earthly use. In the space, we can't carry all the food and all the materials with us. So we have developed a technology where we can convert the energies, which we call gravitational and magnetic field, into matter. So what has happened, now we're converting this technology into the use on Earth because of the application and the situation in Fukushima. According to the Japanese government, today there is over 145,000 dislocated people due to Fukushima. And these are going to be dislocated, they're going to be moved, they're going to, they cannot come back to their lands for maybe 10, 20, 30 years, or if they come back, there will be problems as we've seen. The same problem we see in Niger, where the uranium mines are, and we see a lot of contamination, where the most of the nuclear materials of French government arrives, and the local people are getting destroyed very badly through harm, through the uranium contamination and other radioactive materials, which is airborne in the dust. So this is not just application for Fukushima. Let's go through the step by step. What has happened in Fukushima? is that tons, we estimate about 160 tons of highly radioactive material, uranium, plutonium and others, have literally blown into the air. And what they've done, they have contaminated and mixed within the soil. It has come in in a very simple way, and further on, they have mixed themselves into the water. They are part of the structure, and they sit there as energy packs. They sit there as material, what we call radioactive material. What has happened now is that this water, contaminated water, has mixed itself with more radioactive material, new compositions with the water. So we have what we received is a mixture of two, more radiation, more materials. 
and this story will carry on for years to come. But the whole contamination, the whole process, all these materials can be extracted very easily. We do this in a space. Now we are showing it how it can be done in a very easy way by the farmers. If you're a farmer, it's very easy. I'm sure in your farms you have plenty of rusted nails. It's very simple. You have rusted iron bars. You have wires in different shapes and forms. You have pieces of metals in any shape or form. Most probably you have a lot of copper pipes and everything else which is hanging around. There are pieces of metals which are sitting around. There are literally chicken barbed wires in your farms which you've been using. All these can be used to turn the situation in Fukushima. How is done? We explain this as a breakthrough technology and we explain in details how simply you can change the situation. Look for whatever you have in metals because the rustier the material is, the better results you're going to get in absorption. Because what this is, is oxidated, which means it's literally metals which are rusted. Copper you cannot rust, but you can find different conditions with it. The same with the metals, with the mesh. If you find a good combination of materials, as farmers, you can use them very simply. We have to create conditions. Earth was not created because somebody took different measures and amounts of different materials to put together. The conditions were created that certain materials came together and led to creation of this planet. The same thing is with the world of science in plasma technology. We create conditions and our conditions should give or let us reach the point where we can create or develop or be able to produce new materials. So, what we've done in a very simple way. We have looked at every opportunity what people around the world have been using and have the accessibility to and they've been telling us for years what they've been doing. We listen, we don't use some of the processes, we use some of the processes. So, how you can change the situation? These are the rusty nails. These are the chicken mesh wires. You can get the wires. Any material which can be processed. This is a very simple material. It's called caustic. If you use caustic in a very simple way, for about a kilo of caustic, you can produce at least half a ton of a right material. All you do, you spray the caustic at the bottom and very simply, very simply add boiling water. So you need the heat generators. If you can have a look inside, the process is literally a boiling process. What this does, this creates the right condition and environment for the nano oxides to be produced in the right way but not just with caustic. There is a process. You have to close the gap, close the container, and leave it for 24 hours minimum. The material needs time. Needs time to do its work. After 24 hours, you, all you need to do is to empty the container. Then, do not touch make sure you do not touch the material much. You can drain it or you can use a different composition of containers. We recommend the use of plastic because you get certain results with plastic. Then what you do, you transfer the materials from the container where you left the material for over 24 hours into an environment which is electrically conductive. Another wire mesh on the bottom. You put all the material on a table or a mesh, as I've done here. Very simply, you have 
to keep the condition very moist. When you place the material on a conductive plate like this, you need one process to be added. You have literally to add a very, very small amount of voltage across the materials. So what you need, if you look at the condition, the voltage which shows you create the electrical condition. This has to be on impulses of just for randomly between 5 to 10 seconds. You withdraw the current, you withdraw the voltage, and then what you do, you leave it for approximately 5 to 7 hours. You come back again, in 5 or 7 hours, you create another small current. You do this process 3-4 times over 24 hours. So, even small battery connected to the plate creates the right condition for the electric current to flow. What does this thing do? What does this process do? This process allows nano layers to be produced from under to the top of the material. So, what you create in a very simple way is nanomaterials at zero cost. Scientifically has proven, scientists in Russia and in other part of the world have shown how nanomaterials can be used for decontamination, but they do not know how to produce it in an easy way and cheap way. Now you have seen how it's been done. We have used this method nearly over seven years. We do it for different purposes. Now you can do it yourself in the farm. Total cost, less than $10, $15 to produce as much material. Then we show the next process what you have to do. What we're going to show is what we have produced and how you produce materials with one of the most expensive considered nanotechnologies in the world, which it costs only a few cents. As we said, the Cash Foundation opens the doors of its simple technology in 2014, and we start opening it from now. And with it, we'll come to the next step. We show you the materials, how these materials are produced and kept. The production of new material is not something new to Keshe Foundation. If you look at the logo of the Keshe Foundation, we always spoke with and about new materials. These are the new materials, as in deep space, we cannot rely on supply from Earth. We have developed a technology where you can produce as much material as you like. These are exactly what we have produced from the same process as before. These are copper wires with the fully nanomaterials. This is the chicken mesh wire nanomaterials. This could be a saw which was rusted in the car, fully nano-coated oxide. A radiator with aluminium nano coated. On the other hand, this is the nails which we showed you before. Again, nano coated. Other pieces which you can see, all nano coated. Anything which is with a steel or copper iron, any metal can be nano coated, even with nano coated gold. This is the wires, which we saw, we put in the system. These are literally, every one, every single layer is nano-coated. These materials, like these wires, have been tested by the universities in Europe, and they've been confirmed to have the characteristics of it. This is another nano-layer. These are copper sheets, which is used in batteries. This is copper oxide nano, in reality worth a lot of money, because it can be used as a superconductor and an insulator. So, but there is one secret. You cannot expose these materials to air till the point of use. So, you have to keep them away from oxidization any further once you bring them out of the major box, the main box. So, let's see what happens to this. As we said before, that's a nanotechnology which we've been involved in. 
What is a nanotechnology? Nanomaterials are literally create holes and gaps. So what happens? If you create holes and gaps, what we call PN junctions, in these materials, this environment creates a specific gravitational magnetic field of its own. So what happens? This creates a gravitational magnetic field on the metal that attracts another material to itself because it creates its own miniature earth on that metal and that attracts near enough the materials to it. So what in happen, it actually happens is that the, let's say this is the gap on the steel which you just processed. The gap is big enough to accommodate the cesium. So the cesium gets locked into the metal. On the other hand, you have another material. Let's say there is another radioactive material which is in the water or in the land. So you lock that too. This is the process. So what you do, you can do two different processes. As we said before, you can put the material in land, but the best solution for it is to mix, to water the land in a very simple way. Allow the radioactive material to become some sort of moist and mixed in the solution. So what happens? This solution now, this technology of putting water with soil has been tested by scientists from universities in Japan. We have seen their process, we have seen, they have shown us the technology. So what they are doing, they are literally uh, mixing the soil, topsoil with water and extracting the water and they measure the radiation level reduces by washing but then they have the water in another tank, they have to dissolve it or collect it and find a solution for that. But with this method, all you do, you literally mix your materials in the sand, in the soil, in the water. You have two options. Then because you have metals, you can run a magnet, you can create a magnet, and all you do, the magnet with a cesium or radioactive material attached to it is extracted. These magnets can be temporary magnets induced by current or magnets which you can use as solid magnets. Then you have decontamination and how to remove them. The best we suggest is magnetic plates as you see. You can run over the land and when you collected all the materials which you de deposited in like the nails, you extract it and you literally give it back to TEPCO. TEPCO can do a lot with this. So, in fact, all you do, you re-collect all the contaminated materials back in. What does your copper wire do? Attracts a different type. In turn, you collect these materials. The wire, the same process. So, all you do, you extract, clean up the land, and you allow the material to be collected in different form. You can see what, there is another nail connected with some more material. You All you do, you deposit it back and when you demagnetize, drops in. So now, we haven't solved the problem, but at least we have managed to decontaminate the land. The process in there when it's collected is for TEPCO and the Japanese nuclear industry to sort out. Then you go back into the water contamination. The water contamination is very much the same. You add what has happened in this process, the materials which we have, uranium, plutonium, whatever, has been mixed in the water. By allowing, by putting these materials in the water, all you do, you capture them. Again, attached. Now we can physically remove them. You have different shape and form because you can do the same thing. You can do the same backing. Again, the same with the nails. The nails, you attract different radioactive materials. There is a process what is known as dragging. You can use a wire mesh in the farmland and just literally drag across the water. 
you absorb more material this way. We've tested this and it works and it's correct. In a way, with two, three times the same process, you can decontaminate. But at the same time, in a very simple way, if you have what has happened now with TEPCO, collecting all these soils in these blue bags and black bags in tons and tons, what they can do, they can mix like the uh, metals like iron and coppers into the sacks or empty the sacks in the environment and then all they need to do is literally to hold on to the material they have in the sacks and empty the, the product out. What you're left with is residual which is metallic and is magnetized. So you have again different propositions and compositions back together. So in a very simple way, we used to use coal as decontaminating material or filtering. Now we use nanomaterials. Nanomaterials are literally full of holes that are the best filters, not only for materials, but for magnetically, gravitationally induced materials like nuclear materials, like cesium. Why cesium is so radioactive? Because it has a higher number of neutrons. And these neutrons are trying to decay to a slow, uh, lower level, which is the electron and the proton. So they release more of their energies. So you have a large number of neutrons in the, in the center of the radioactive material. And these rapid energies for decay dictates how much magnetic gravitational fields are released from this material. These magnetic fields can link up with another composition which is on the metal and get attracted to. This is a change of the use and production of new materials. It's unknown, now we are breaking more and more into it. Now, we go to the next step for TEPCO. TEPCO cannot literally use these kind of things so freely but they have to do different composition and proposition. So we show you the next step, how it can be done. This process is unknown, literally new technology. These materials are what we've been told cannot exist. This is CO2 gas in a solid state as a powder. This is the same CO2 liquid at the room temperature and pressure. We've shown these materials before. Literally, as you can see, the CO2 is in a powder state at room temperature. What has happened in this process? We have managed not to change the environmental condition to reach the new material, but we have managed to change the characteristics and gravitational magnetic field of the matter. How it's done? It's very simple. This process is literally can carried out and produced in simple units like this. These are, as you see, it's a working unit, it's not a theoretical. And what happens? What you see, you see the same mesh again as before. And what you see, literally, you can see the same wires as before, which has been used for that process. So, in a very simple creating condition and environment and through some seven ten years of research we have to change the taboo that gases can be in a solid state at minus so many hundreds of degrees or high pressures in fact when you use these materials and you produce them this is nano copper oxide in the same form and this is another new material. These materials do not burn, do not get destroyed, no acid can affect them. We have tried every means to destroy these materials and it has not worked. You can see the residual of it here. This is over 200 degrees temperature. It comes back and it solidifies. What we offer to TEPCO is very simple. You mix this material into the water. 
into the liquid in your containment and you allow it to settle. In this process, all the nuclear materials within the water, doesn't matter cesium, tritium, both extremes, H3 to cesium-137 and plus, will get attached to the, more, to the structure of this material and it literally settles to the bottom. The water you get on the top is totally pure water, no contamination. So, we get rid of the contamination problem which is sitting at the moment in these tanks. What you can do at the same time as you were creating the oxide, nano-oxides we showed before, literally, you can place a magnet and you can see how the magnet brings the material to one position. So, the rest of the water stays clear. This is a different process, the same. All material has come to the point where the magnet sits. So, you extract it as a solid. The same with this material. Again, you can see the shape of even the hole. You can see how the material gets attracted and sits at the bottom. So, what you do, you have literally totally clean water on the top you get rid of. And all the contamination is settled to the bottom. You can carry the same process in either way. All you do, you take the top layer off. No contamination. And that's how you clean up millions of gallons of water which is sitting in tanks in TEPCO. The process costs mass production maybe half a million. But the situation can be solved and can be used for future accidents once we learn more. This technology is very much, very similar to the, to the technology we saw in the Iraq-Kuwaiti War. In the Iraq-Kuwaiti War, if those are the ones who remember, prior to this war, there was a method, only one method known, that if you had the explosion on the oil well, you had to drill a hole on the side, it would have cost a few million dollars to cap the fire at the oil well. When Saddam left Kuwait, he blew a lot of oil wells up and set them on fire to make sure that the enemy never benefit by it. And to close these oil wells would have literally taken years. The Americans and the British asked for international organization to help that it can be brought down much faster. Romanians arrived with a jet on the back of a truck, reverse jet, and all they did, they literally turned on the engines and they blew out the fire with the jet engine back, back wind. And so rapidly, in a matter of weeks, what was assumed to last for years to decontaminate and clean up and switch off was solved. This is the same technology but very advanced, but this is part of the structure of our own body. We live through this process. We've been told the gases do not and cannot be in the solid state at the room pressure and room temperature. But in fact, if you just think for one second, you realize how this hypocrisy has become to be accepted. Look at the structure of your own body. We are made of amino acids, carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, gases in the environment. And we say these gases cannot be become solid matter. But the truth is, if you pinch your own and squeeze your own flesh, you are pinching solid gases. So in reality, we never understood how this process is done, but now we can see it. The interesting thing is that these materials behave as superconductors. Best superconductors we ever knew at room temperature and pressure. We published this three years ago in a book called The Structure of the Light. You can see 
the material. You can see how it made to solid and the material has been tested by the universities confirming the technology. It's been kept silent and one of the biggest pressures on Cash Foundation has been to keep these kind of technologies silenced that the old technologies can carry on. This is the Raman spectroscopy and infrared spectroscopy done by the University of Ghent in Belgium, not by us. And it confirms the fingerprint of CO2 characteristics. So what we show you as CO2 has been tested by independently by scientists, but has been classified because of the reasons known to the government. So now you have seen how simply, as you can see, this material is settling very, very slowly. By the time in 24 hours, it'll be totally exactly like these materials here. Queen water, you can literally drink this. You can use it. The same material, the same things can be used for decontamination of the radioactive material in the air. In this package, we extract CO2. We create an environment where CO2 is extracted from the air. This is one of the contamination problems which we have. They say too much CO2. In air now, we have too much radioactive materials. The same process can be developed for extracting it. We have done it. These simple systems have created converted CO2 gas into a solid state. We can absorb the same radioactive materials from the environment in a larger scale. Now, the whole thing comes down to one thing, how we have managed to extract what has been released by TEPCO using what material is available in the farmlands and in the country and extract the joint together. This material can later on be separated in a very simple way. The technology exists in South Korea and in Belgium. We know the company which can do it if they need be. Now, we come to a totally radical technology, which we have never disclosed, but for the first time, we are going to show and explain the process and technology, which can help with the decontamination in a totally different way. Now we come to an extension to this technology, which has been known and is being shown. If we understood how we could create a new magnetic environment that could attract other materials to itself and how we could absorb from the soil or from the water other materials by creating gravitational magnetic field of the material which we want to extract. This brings us to a totally new technology, unknown, and we spoke about it and we are going to show the systems for it for the first time. We showed how you can use the new materials to extract radioactive material. What has this done? In reality, for the first time, we have shown we can make magnets. These are two magnets. They attract each other, as long as they are steel or they are iron-based or near iron material. But now we have shown how copper can create an environment to attract cesium, or steel can attract hydrogen tree, tritium. So for the first time we have shown that we can produce magnet for any material. Magnet to attract plastic, magnet to attract copper, magnet for wood, for glass, for bottles, for all sorts of combinations, even for fabric. This creates a totally new opportunity in the world of science. For example, we can use this technology to extract all these bottles which are floating in the sea bigger than some continents at the moment. They are floating all over the oceans. We know it. We have been tracing it. So now we can produce magnetic gravitational fields which can attract these plastics and become part of the energy supply. How this can be done? 
we cannot produce so much copper wires and chicken mesh. What we have done with the new technology, plasma technology, which we have developed, we have produced a system, which this system can be placed in any environment to extract, extract from the environment whatever material is needed, be it the energy magnetic field of copper, gold, glass or plastic or even hydrogen or oxygen. As in deep space, we will not need to carry any more supply of oxygen or water because we create the gravitational magnetic field of the element we want and as we see, we can extract what we need from the environment. We extract the energy and then through a conversion, we change it to the matter, which is much easier. And this process of changing energy to matter we release surplus energy, which we have shown in this book, in this experiment done in Holland by the organizations which did independent testing. We create a lot of energy. We run a light. We run a motor. It's been shown. So we can produce all sorts of things. You can see it's been done independently and it's running a motor. So, in fact, now the knowledge of man has come so far that we can produce magnet for any material. This will change the mining process. This change the position like where we have the cities which are highly uh, poisoned air, is damaging people. We can produce conditions and systems which extracts air pollution directly from the air. Cities can be made cleaner cost very very little few thousand dollars so what we've done we've seen these things as physical entities now we show you the systems which can be used to be done as a dynamic system with the contamination which is sitting on the bottom of the sea by fukushima we cannot extract them with these kind of methods we have to create and develop a new technology which we can extract everything from any environment. For the first time we show such a system. This system has been developed and has been tested. So what we've done, we developed technologies where we can extract any poison, any material from the environment. As you can see, these are very simple systems. They've been developed for the process. In these systems, what we create is exactly the same environment of the plasma of the material, destination material. All you do is you allow the material, the field of the material to be produced. The magnetic gravitational field matches the gravitational magnetic field of the poison or contamination and you withdraw it. I move this further out so that you can see another system which has been set up. This system, as you see, has the same material on it as we shown before. This material can be used the same way to create environment and the plasma condition for extraction of cesium or plutonium. This is in reality, if you look, the shape of the earth, the shape of the sun, the shape of any plasma, electron or proton. Now that we have the knowledge to create magnetic fields and gravitational fields of any material, we do not need to produce solid materials like this. We create the condition, magnetic field gravitational, what we call MAGRAB, within these reactors, and these reactors allow the full extraction of the whole element spectrum. You can set the field strength for plastic, and a few seconds later, you can change the field for glass. But this has a huge implication. As we said in our mandate, 
our roadmap of 2014. We will see to the end of the world. Now we explain how. Even the battery of your telephone in your pocket carries a small microchip. The telephone you carry carries a microchip. The most sophisticated aircrafts carry a microchip. Aircraft carriers carry a microchip. We can produce gravitational magnetic field of the carbon or gold or any entity within these materials. When I extract the material, there is no chip, there is no telephone. We give two choices. We bring back what we announced through this technology, the World Peace Treaty, as we announced it, or we enforce it. The technology at this moment getting developed by three nations we know. Decontamination is the benefit to man as much as aid, the arming and World Peace Treaty. We are set to change the scene and will change the scene. But now we have shown how the knowledge is in the hand of public. These reactors are built. There has been a huge question for a long time how I run my reactors, I achieve power, energy and lift. If you understood how these materials are created, very simply you replicate the same thing in these reactors. Very easy. Within the next few months, the scientists who are working with us, and I even received an email in the past 72 hours, one of the governments have set up, one of the top nations in the world have set up laboratories working with these technologies and developing it. And we are assisting and we are going to assist them further to develop it fully. So, what would you like to be? We just need to create a condition from miles away as a carbon in the microchip or the gold in the microchip. You extract it, the microchip is literally useless. This microchip is on the aircraft, the aircraft cannot fly. The technology will not be used to harm no one, but the technology will be used to allow a gap for world leaders to start thinking for a new solution. By June of this year, we'll release the full technology, which means we will show how systems electronically can come to literally not to function. You have to rewire the whole aircraft. You have to rewire a whole aircraft carrier or a battleship. Change the condition and use the materials and these factories for the peaceful purposes or the technology now is in the hand of the people that enforce it. Thank you very much. Bring in the scientists from Tokyo if they have access to them. Hi, Hello. Yoko. Uh, hi, hi, you're back. Yes, it's got some uh, connection problem. Sorry. Oh, okay. problem. Are you bringing in your Japanese scientists and other yes. people? Yes, uh, Rick, could you help me to call? I think they are already online. You, Coco. Um, you have to translate from English to Japanese or Japanese to English. Can you introduce him who he is? Yes, I will ask him to. Watanabe sensei. Hi. Ah, irashimasu. Okay, uh, the, the professor Watanabe is already on the call. So, wait one more. Could we ask the professor to introduce himself and his field of expertise? Okay. Uh, uh, were, so please let me uh, pitch in Japanese for a while. Um, 
、あの、えー、これから、あの、まず第3部という形で、日本語で主に、あの、日本の、えー、科学者をお迎えして、えっ、ー、と、現地で農業に携わっていらっしゃる方もお迎えして、あの、こうディスカッションを進めていきたいというふうに思っております。木下さん、通訳お願いします。石田さん。はい、大丈夫です。あ、じゃあ、こうね。自己紹介からお願いします。はい、ええー、今日は先生の自己紹介、渡辺先生。えー、東京大学、はい、ええー。大学院、はい。総合文化研究科っていうところにいます。はい。えー、放射能を科学的に理解するというご本あ、著書もされていらっしゃいまして、えー、東京大学で、えー、特別な、まあ、東北復興のための、えー、講義なども数々されていらっしゃる先生です。今日はよろしくお願いいたします。はい、よろしくお願いします。えー、っと、専門は植物の環境との関わり、まあ、そういったことを、えー、研究しています。もう一度お願いしていいですか What he specializes in、uh, is a、uh, research with the plants and、uh, he's、uh, researching in、uh, i n t e g r a l cultural. And so on. And also,、uh, he has、uh, published a certain、uh, book which is all related to the radiation and uh, uh, which uh, uh, the influences is on the plant and so on.、Okay. Can you explain to us what is the effect of radiation from Fukushima on the plants in Japan?、Uh, uh, uh, えー、今のですね、福島の状況というのをどのように捉えていらっしゃるか、先生の方からご説明いただいてもいいですか。えー、っと、正直まだちゃんと現地を見ていないんですけれども、えー、かなり除染などは、えー、田畑に関しては進んでいて、えー、まあ工作などもできるようになっている部分がかなり増えたと思っています。えー、まだ、Oh? To be honest,、uh, he hasn't had a chance to visit、uh, the Fukushima yet, but、uh, as far as he can see, that,、uh, especially for、uh, farmland, they are、uh, restarting in the、uh, harvest, and uh, uh, there are some uh, uh, activities for、uh, farming and planting. That's what he can see. Yes, but what is the effect of radiation from the food which is cultivated and harvested from these lands? What is his opinion? まあ、しているかもしれないというようなところに関して、何か、あのー、危惧されていたり、危機感というのをお持ちでいらっしゃいますか、えーっとえー、っとあの基本的に、えー、検査を、えーまあ、していて、まあ、その基準、はい、クリアをしているものだけ流通していると、まあ、そういうシステムを、えー、やってますので。あまりその辺で問題が起こるとは思っていません。What he understands that there's a certain examination for food before released on the market, and everything you can buy on the market is actually past the examination. That's what the people understand. Are they passed with the contamination? Contaminated but below the standard level, or are they contaminated because the,、uh, the contamination bar has been raised slightly that the farmers、uh, can mix their food or their products with other materials in other parts of Japan that it reduces the radiation level?、Mm -hmm. 
、えーまあ、食品に関してはこれは、まあ、事実かどうかわからないんですけれども、あのーまあ、基準値を、まあ、あの高めに設定していたりですとか、まあ、他の,その、まあえー、物質と混ぜてですね、あのー、放射値炎が出ない、まあ、低く出るようにちょっと工夫再興するようなそういうようなあのことっていうのが起こっていたりしてるということを、まあ、あの博士ご自身はあの海外から聞いているみたいなんですけども、えーまあ、そういうご不安も含めてなんですがあの先生はあのその東京大学の方で実際にあの学生さんに向けてあの放射能に対してどのようなスタンスであの教えていらっしゃるんですかね。えーもその科学的な知識というのはもちろんだと思うんですが、うんはいはい、あのそれだけではなくて、えー、その基準というのがどのように設けられているか、その科学的な根拠っていうのを、えー、物理、科学、はい、生物の立場から、えー、3人の先生が一緒で教えています。なるほど。3人で特別講義という形でやられているいうそうですね。はい。この後、振り組みは震災後に始まったんですかあ、ごめんなさい。もう一回お願いします。取り組みは、あの、もちろん震災後に始まったと思うんですけど、うん、震災後から取り組まれてらっしゃるんですか、はい、そうです。あの、震災後、えっ、ー、と、三年経ちました。えー、もう震災後から始めました。はい。下さん、一回。はい、えっ、ー、と、what is his, uh, uh, Working as a professor, that he's giving lectures to the students of the university that what which is the relation with the radiation with the crops and the plants, which in in the stance of scientific research. Yeah. What have they? What is their finding in respect to radiated foods or agricultural foods?、Uh, sorry, what is that? Could you repeat it? What is, what is their understanding of the effect of the radiation on the food chain? Aha.、Uh-huh. Uh, 学生さん、まあ、消費者の方かもしれないんですけども、そういう、まあ、汚染されたその食品に対するそのなんです正しい知識、理解というのは、あのされているというふうにお思いになりますか。最初からは無理で、えーはい、あの順調になってあの基礎からお話をすると、えー、分かってくると、はいえー、学生は冷静に考えられるようになると思います。はい、At the beginning, it is it's always difficult for them to understand. So as they actually giving them lessons, they gradually understand the circumstances. Can you repeat that? I couldn't hear you. <laughs> at, the, at the very beginning, it's always hard to understand for them. But、uh, as, they, as, as Mr. Watanabe gives lectures, they start understanding the circumstances. He insists that it's required education in the consumer levels and also for the student or the children in, in living in the future. あのまあ、まさにそういった放射能の教育というのを先駆けてやっていらっしゃるというあのことですよね。はい、えー、そう思ってます。はい。ありがとうございます。えー、でですね、もう一お一方あの本日ご参加いただいておりましてご紹介させてください。Please let me introduce one more participant from Japan、えーえー。田中進様です。えー、農協法人、えー、サラダボールという、あのー、山梨県の方なので、まあ、直接的に被災地ではないんですが、あの大規模な農家、それから農家の若手のネットワーク、えー、をさまざまな形で取り組んでいらっしゃる、えーまあ、若手農家の代表というか、えー、なんですが、田中さん、聞こえますでしょうか。はい、皆さんこんこにちはこんにちは。よろしくお願いいたします。よろしくお願いします。えー、田中さんの方からもざっと今までのそのサラダボールの、えー、概要ですとか、簡単にお話しいただいてよろしいですか
はいあのー、10年前に、えー、設立をした農業生産法人です、で日本では、まあ、比較的珍しい、あのー、全くの農家ではないところからスタートして、えー、雇用形態で、あのー、若者たちが働いている会社です、でえー、野菜をです、ね、年間通して30品目ぐらい、えー、作って。えー、いわゆる市場出荷ではなく直接契約をしてあの出荷をするという、まあ、比較的最近の流れに沿ったというかですねあの最近の流れの農業経営をしているのではないかなというふうには考えてます農家の進化系というか次世代型農家だと思うんですが吉田さん簡単に通訳できますか And uh, his、uh, organization is、uh, composed with the farmers, and the farmers are all basically youngsters. And they actually work as the farmers and provide their、uh, crops and、uh, vegetables to not to the market, but the contracted uh, uh, certain customers. So that's the unique point of the organization. Yeah, but what is his connection with、uh, Fukushima? Is he in touch with the farmers in Fukushima、yes. or do they? He's Can he tell us? Yes. Pardon? Let me, let me explain.、Uh, he is networking、uh, all、um, you know, young farmers' networks in all over Japan, including Fukushima area. Yeah. And then those are the young and then very ambitious f a r m e r to、yeah. you know, develop a new standard of the farming and new, you know. Uh, they are the, actually the, the people who have to indicate this kind of、uh, you know, radioactive removal activity, also. So, this is the reason why I invited him for this discussion today. Yeah, what is, what is, what is his, uh, what is, uh, his uh, view or understanding of what is happening with the young farmers in the Fukushima area or in the contaminated area by <laughs> Fukushima <laughs> accident? I- 田中さんお聞きしてもよろしいですかはいあ今田中さんご自身は山梨の方で農業されているということで、はい、福島の,その農家の方たちとの,その交流というのとかもその、まあ、若手ネットワークをやっている中では終わりになるそうですねはいありますね、えーまあ、そういう方たちからその汚染の状況というか、まあ、そういった放射能に対しての、はい、あのー、まあえー、まあ聞いてらっしゃることですとか、はい、あのどうした形で受け止めてらっしゃるのかというのを、まあはい、あの私たち日本人はあのよく分かっているんですが、はい、あのせっかくで海外の皆さんたちにシェアしたいと思うんですけれども、はいはいはい、やはりあの汚染そのものよりもあのその背景にある分からない部分として風評被害にとてもやはり苦しんでいるというのが一番の実態じゃないかと思います。<笑>例えば、oh, so、he has... yes, carry on. Yes, I have connection with a Yes, we know there is a problem with the name Fukushima and food in Japan are outside. But、um, do these farmers、uh, have. A, I know the Japanese government has given clearance to sell the food, but the farmers feel and they know that their food is contaminated. But they still have to produce it because they've been told to produce.、Um, but I want to know what is, the, what is the condition for these farms? Are they farming all the lands, or a、uh, major part of the lands cannot be touched or be entered? ことらしいんですけども、まあ、中にはですねあの農家の方たちの中であのどうしてもまあ放射能汚染が、まあ、残留物質などがまあ測定され
たとしてもですね、はい、あの本当にまあもちろん許容,の、まあ、許容というか、まあ、その範囲の、うん、趣味はともあれなんですけれどもあの本当にまあ辛い思いでそれを出荷しなければならないというようなあのプレッシャーというか。状況というかそうでないと生きていけないというような、まあ、そういうような状況を、まあ、聞いているというんですけどもそういう、はい、なんていうんですかね、えー、国からのプレッシャーとか、あのー、そういったものというのは、まあ、農業をやってらっしゃる方の中にあれになるんですかあのそうですねあの農業の持ってる、えー、特徴的な側面としてこう地域に就職するみたいな側面があるので自分がやりたいことだけではなく地域だとか国の,その、えー、意向に沿わなきゃいけない場面っていうのはあの少なからずあるとは思います。It's partially there in another control, some local government, both local government and national government for the food making. So they have to produce whatever, is, whatever can be produced, contaminated or uncontaminated. I think they,、uh, I think they, they have no, I mean, no say. trick or any you know, deal. Yeah, any trick for this in the farmer side, but let me ask. まあ、一番ケシャ博士が気にされていることはですね、まあ、本当にこの汚染された物質が、あの食品が出回ってしまっているんじゃないかというところにあるみたいなんですけれども、あのまあ、いろいろとまあニュースなんかで騒がれては日本でもいますが、そういったものをやっぱり。意図的に流さないと、あのー、流通しなければならないというようなプレッシャーがある社会とか、あのー、なんていうんですかね、放、う、射、んえー、能に対しての,その恐怖感みたいなもの、えーすみません誤解があったらあれですけど多分私が知る限り汚染されたものがなあの流通されることはないんじゃないですかね。It's possibility to be distributed contaminated food in Japan as a farmer,、mm -hmm. he clearly stated. So, okay, good, so、yeah. who measures the radiation level or contamination level on this、uh, food produced? The food is a good thing. The food is a good thing. The food is a good thing. 例えばその田中様がお作りになった食品ですとかもしくはその農家のネットワークの形とか作られたもので何かそういう、まあ、検,検査というかを通るんですか今あの出荷団体が独自にあのやってたりはしますね。あでそうなんですねはいじゃあその義務というのではなくてあの独自に行われてる義務もあるすみませんはっきりちょっと私はそこを認識してないからわかりませんけどもはい多分ごでにクリアインフォメーション but、uh, it probably he he knows that、uh, some independent organization、uh, actually apply this、uh, radioactive measurement or test Individual, individually, but it's not on duty. <laughs> but he, he hasn't got any information about it. Do you, does he know if there has been any report from the farmers who've been physically or health wise been affected by this in the Fukushima area? <laughs> えー、それを監視していると思います。それで定期的に報告をしています。で、まあ、えっ、ー、と、それとあと
出荷だけではなくて、流通の方、大きな、あの、えー、えー、あ、スーパーなんですね。そういったところも自主的に2度目の、まあ、検査をしていると。それで店頭に出してますので、それを、まあ、あの、買いくぐるとか難しい、まあ。難しいと思いますけど。So, in, the, in Fukushima, there is a very strict you know, assignment for the radioactive in the governmental level. And also, there is a, some distributor, like a big supermarket, also、uh, testing it individually. So, there is a kind of double check. So,、mm -hmm. that, that's. Is this、uh, Professor Watanabe told us that there is、uh, not many c h a n c e To, you know, through this contaminated food. Yes, so this is kind of a very strict ex examination. But、um, is the agricultural farming with the farmers goes on on the contaminated land, or these are just、uh, in the Fukushima area where there is less contamination or no contamination?、Mm. Okay. <laughs> This cultivation goes on, the, on, the, on the, near the station in the red zones, what they call it. Near the station of a. Yeah, near the, near the power station, there is a big area which is a no go zone for people、uh, or a limited time, which covers mainly agricultural a r e a and some、uh, living areas. Are there any farming going on in those areas? うん、もう避難区域みたいになっているところの今の農業っていうのはあの、まあ、食,も食べ物生産はもちろん行われていない状態ですよね、はい、ということを、はい、あの私は。あ、yes, yes. So, there is no food production in this area.、Uh, so, we are talking about the place when it's been tested that is no contamination. So, they allow what is in the Fukushima area, but no contamination. But,、uh, Yes, but that's the point we have to discuss about today. So,、uh, we, can we really opti be optimistic? Like, there is no contamination? In, that's what we、know. hear from your, your people, huh? This is, the,、yeah. this is what, you, what we listen to people from Japan, from you. And,、uh, but what this raises the question why there are still 145,000 people today? Farmers and residents who are not in their homes and in the land.、Mm -hmm. uh, yes. So, can you yeah, ask that? Yes.、Uh, let me explain.、Mm -hmm. So, I m a d a n i s o n o m a s o n o s a b o t a b e m o n o g a s o n o h o n t o n i s o n i n a n k u i k i e s a y s a s a r i t e n a i t e n a t o z e n a n d e s g a t h e r e h o k a n o e r i a d e k i t i r t a b e m o n o i t a s t e m a d o y a t a r a s o n o s h o s h a n a k a t i a n s h i n k a o m o t e t e t o k o r o n i a m a h a k a s e t o s t e w a m a k o k e n o s t a i d e s s i a n o k o r e k a r a s o n o n a n i o a n o d o y u t a s a p o t o m i n a s a n g a s t i o t o s a r i t e r k a t i t o k o r o o m a o s h i n a r i t a i t y u n o m o あるんですけども、まあ、今もなおその福島の、えー、かなりの、えー、世帯の方が避難をされていたりする中で、まあ、博士としてはその具体的に海外からの支援として、まあ、どんなことがあの求められているのかというのを、まあ、知りたいというんですが今回の,その、まあえー、汚染除去技術というのも、まあ、そうだと思うんですけれども、えー、と何かそういう、えー、こういう支援こういうまあ、あの海外からの手が差し伸べられると道がこう開けるかもしれないですとかあのそういうアイデアはございますか渡辺先生、多分、えー、ですね、うん。やはり今、安心なレベルの食べ物が福島からできているわけですがそれは相当の努力がいります。であの土壌に、まああの接種も吸収しないように別の物質を入れたり、まあ、そういった工夫をしているその労力をいかに軽減するかそういう技術があれば受け入れられると思います。うん、なるほど。田中あえどあえあえあえあえあえあえあえあえあえあえあえあえあえあえあえあえあえあえあえあえあえあえあえあえあえあえあえあえあえあえあえあえあえあえあえあえあえあえあえあえあえあえあえあえあえあえあえあえあえあえあえあえあえあえあえあえあえあえあえあえあえあえあえあ
uh, we can do from uh, outside as a Kesha Foundation. It's not only that, uh, you know, um, con decontamination technology, but there is any other possibility. And then um, he told me that there is actually implemented some dojoni ko umete kyushu saseru yona mono desu ka, sensei? So, you mono desu ne. Ato wa, ano, my, ano, ame ga fru tambi ni, ma, tasho, 接種も移動しますのでそういったものを歯止めかけられるようなまあやはり吸収剤そういったイメージのものかと思いますあなるほど。There is already、uh, some, some part already accepted this、uh, kind of technology to absorb the radioactive material in, in certain material. I don't know where exactly you know,、uh, invested from, but、uh, This kind of you know, technology will be really, really welcome to this local and help for the local farmers. Yeah, we will speak to TEPCO and others very soon again. We're going to release this video to them in a, if they haven't watched it or they're not online at the moment.、Um, what, what, is, what is very interesting for me is what we see from NHK and from Russian television reporters. Is that up to now, in the past two years, 80 farmers have committed suicide because of、uh, or from the Fukushima area as they cannot produce or go back to their farms?、Um, and、uh, the sons of these farmers, according to the videos which are、uh, available from NHK,、uh, who are doing the farming after the fathers. Are refusing to eat the food which they are cultivating because they say they know themselves is contaminated. This is documented、um, documentary from NHK, your what do you call it, Japanese national television.、Yeah. And they, they, they've been in the public meetings and they're asking the governments how can we sell contaminated materials which we don't eat ourselves but you sell it in public. This is what I want to get to how much truth is into this. Or is the Japanese public being kept blind into these positions? But if it's on your national television, I think it's something a lot of people know about it, but they don't want to talk about it.、Mm -hmm. Okay. So, I know, 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 まあ、東電への提供ですとかそういうことを積極的にやるというのはもちろんなんですけど、まあ、すごく懸念していらっしゃるのは、まあ、もうこの状況に悲観してですね、あのーまあ、NHK のドキュメンタリーであのご覧になったと言っているんですけども、あのー、若い農家,のあ農家の方がですね、あのーまあ、親子2代とか何世代かの農家の方が、まあ、ちょっと自殺をしてしまったりですとか、まあ、そういうような。あのーまあ、恐ろしいことが起こっているっていうところをこうこのご覧になってとても胸を痛めているということなんですね。はい、で田中さんの方も何かこうその農業食の生産といったところに対して、まあ、まさに本当に放射の可能性が最もこうあのクリアにしていかなきゃいけない。まあ分野だと思うんですけどもなんかこう海外からのサポートですとか今何か足りていないこうもの先ほどはその、えー、風評被害というところで、まあ、正しい情報だっていうふうなこともおっしゃっていましたがそうですねはい、はい、やっぱりあの安全なものが出来上がっても、えー、汚染されてないものが出来上がってもやはりこう売れないんですねそこに最もやっぱりこう苦しんでいます、うん、で多分こう皆さんの議論を聞いてても日本の農業福島の農業っていう,こう言い方をされるんですけども例えばオープンフィールドのものとグリーンハウスで作るようなものはまた全然この汚染に関しては違うんですけどもそれでもうん福島のものとしてこう扱われるわけですね。正しくこうやははりこう安全性を示せる形っていうのはあの今後まだまだ課題なんじゃないかなっていう気がします。それが、えー、この先意欲を持って、えー、生産者が農業に望めるかどうかにかかってくるんじゃないかと。はい、ありがとうございます。えー、as Dr. Tisha concerned, it's 
it's, it, there is a fact that the Japanese farmers are struggling in this situation, of course, but it's mainly about the, uh, they have a, uh, say, crucial higai te, nanti yakusari te mashita. There is a mistake. And the rumors. Rumors, yes. Rumors. Yeah. Yes, rumors. So, so it's a wrong information is distributed as a Fukushima food. So uh, what Tanaka-san told me that there is a difference between the contamination level in the, the, cultiv the food cultivated in the open field and inside of the greenhouse. But they are all mix them together and then they named the blend as a Fukushima food. So, so, so the yeah, this is what we thought. So you see what happened, reports we see in, uh, in from Fukushima, like growing mushrooms, the mushrooms grown on the tents in the bags, as I've said before, have show 50, uh, what do you call, half uh, uh, or 50 percent level of uh, radioactive material contamination or radiation in them, and um, these are not labeled, and these are put into the food chain. Mm -hmm. So we know that this is clearly documented, and we've seen the videos of it. Mm -hmm. So we know the, that's what I said before. They are mixing the contaminated food, so diluting it, and it goes out as as a product which doesn't show to be from Fukushima. あの、あ、ま、本当にそのえ、そうですね、風評被害もそうですけど、本当にそういう実際になんかこのテレビのドキュメンタリーなんかで、ま、あの、起こっていることを、ま、海外から歯がよく、ま、見ているというような状態なん
to get rid of those radioactive material. This is what he heard. But uh, でもそのスピードアップというか、まあ三年かけてのそのこれからどれぐらいかかりそうとか、うん、<笑>そういうところで何かこう。今のレベルをさらに半分とか、うんえー、するには。はい非常に非常に大変なことで、まあ、あの時間、労力が今まで以上にかかるというのは間違いないと思います。えー、どこで、えーまあ、満足するのかで、むしろその土地の中でいかに生きるか、農作物を作るかという技術、それも合わせて必要になるんだと思います。So there is a... Uh, some su- certain success, certain results of the radioactive removal, but、uh, if we can make it like a double、uh, achievement or speed up, it, it will we, be. We, you can, you can, I don't know if you've seen it, give them the link to the video we just released about Fukushima and let、yeah. them look at it in their universities and in their farming communities. Okay. I will ask him to、uh, share your video to his university.、So. あのぜひあの、これは決博士からのお願いなんですけど、まあ、もうその除染活動の効率化というところで、あのもしあの、まあ、東大の方の研究所なんかで一度、あのその今回あのアップしたビデオなんかを見ていただいてあの、農家の方たちとこういうことが実際可能かどうかというのをうご検討いただいたりとかって、できそうですかね。えー、と私だけでは、まあ、ちょっと専門が違うのであの他の研究者と一緒に見るチャンスを作れば作りたいと思います。はいはい、ぜひ一緒にあのあのチャンスを作ろうと思ってますのでよろしくお願いします。He, he going to、uh, building up a team. He cannot work individually, so he need to、uh, make a collaboration. With the other scientists and other team, yeah. We, 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 are, we, we are prepared and we welcome if they want to collaborate with us、uh, to develop the technology rapidly in the university. We'll give you 100% support and full time till they can achieve it. Okay. If you can tell them that, please. Ah, hi. そのまあ、ご覧になっていただいてあの実際にやる取り組みなどがあったらサポートなどあのやらせていただければというですあと田中さんの方もなんでお聞きしたいんですけどやっぱりその、はいあのまあ、いろいろその福島以外のエリアでもその、まあ、農耕作地の除染、まあ、活動っていうのなんですけども。あのご自分で取り組まれている農家さんとか結構いらっしゃるんですか、um, can I ask one more question to Mr. Tanaka? It's about the radioactive removal activity in Japanese farmer. So,、yeah. Any individual challenge at this moment? Yes. What happened? Let me explain something you can pass on to the professor. <clears throat> that if any of the materials which we have shown in the videos produced, the nanomaterials, left in the ground, that t h e y s not retracted and or they are not contaminated when they test、mm-hmm. it or the contamination is reduced, these materials, especially in the liquid form, Mm-hmm. Are one of the most effective fertilizers we know. We have run tests for three years now.、Mm-hmm. So these materials, if left in the ground, themselves become natural、uh, nitrogen absorbers for the ground. So you don't need to fertilize, you can leave these on the ground for years because、mm-hmm. of their property, the、mm-hmm. extract. Nitrogen from the earth in a very natural way from the environment, from the air. So、mm-hmm. they increase, even we have noticed, we, are, we have researched very detailed research on it for three years now, that、mm-hmm. they can increase the harvest by three to five times in some cases. 
Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Let me translate it more precisely later on. I think this is very important information to Professor Watanabe. So please let me do. Yeah. And but the. Uh, あの、ぜひ今後ともちょっと he would like to have some scientific research and scientific report if you have so Maybe we could they have the, share. They have the material. We can provide them with the pictures and the data, uh, mm-hmm. which we run trials now with our group. We have it available. Every step has been photographed over two years, that how the harvest grows, and these are registered seeds, so the characteristics are well known. We, we, don't, we can do that through you when you are here to work with them okay. through the foundation. で、あの、そうですね。一番やっぱり so uh, there is a lot of uh, indi- individual activity for the radioactive removal in the in in the farmers in Japan right now, but uh, there is a biggest requirement about the speed of the measurement because it's the food is have to be you know distributed in the fresh as fresh as possible, so that uh, something very you know speedy measurement system is uh, very much welcome for them and well, mean, are... extra, yeah if you watch the video you can start doing it tonight by 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 Sunday you can start testing it mm-hmm. if they watch the video they can start making the material this weekend and start testing on the farmland by Monday okay あの、今、記者が博士が提案した方法って、あの、とてもその、おっしゃってたそのスピードっていった部分で、多分効果があるかもしれないのと。もしあの、今回ビデオを見て、もしあの、実際やられる方がいらっしゃったら、ぜひあ
uh, and for the nuclear physicists who might be listening, like TEPCO, uh, the process with this material is as it brings in cesium to itself, if you watch the video, it brings to itself nitrogen as well. And these farming lands are full of fertilizers, which are nitrogen based. So the beauty with it is that in the layers of nano layers of these metals, which you put in to extract the cesium and other radioactive material, uh, a material like cesium uh, releases a beta radiation, or what is the what what we have as a basis of like uh, helium. And helium, in conjunction with the uh, nitrogen, which absorb, releases um, uh, oxygen and a hydrogen. And this is a uh, oxygen seventeen, but it can be reprocessed within the layers of the nano layers, where mm -hmm. not only you create fresh, clean water out of the process, but you release a hydrogen, which is the energy which is released for the plant. This is how scientifically it works. So uh, the, the nitrogen with the farming ground, uh, mm -hmm. in conjunction with the cesium, which is a radioactive, which releases the, the what we call a beta radiation. Um, mm -hmm. So this, in, in the layers, have the ability to release, to release oxygen and a mm -hmm. hydrogen, which is part of the energy system for the plant to be absorbed. So the material works in two ways, one absorbing and on its own becoming a energy supply, feed supply for the plant. This is what I said in a few minutes ago that the farmers might see like bubbles on the, on the water where they work. These bubbles mm -hmm. are safe because these are non-radioactive. There is a small pus, they are not radioactive, they're just the oxygen bubbles which is released through the process of the nitrogen decay in the helium interaction. And then what happens is there is a small possibility that the nitrogen might lead to production of tritium in the process, but this mm -hmm. process is very short term when within the layers is absorbed and the mm -hmm. tritium converts into the H2. Okay. So okay. there is no danger. The, the beauty with this process is is absorbs radioactive, it produces mm -hmm. energy, and at the same time become a food for the plant. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is there uh, any document? I, I, the, yeah, the documents for these are available on the, We can provide it. These are scientific data so available. No problem. Hi, you can translate it for him. Ah, もしもし。あ、いいですよ。あの、はい、はい。はい。あの、今のあの、<笑> なれるんじゃないかなという、あの、そういうところで私も今回、あの、こういう場を、あの、設定したんですけど、思いますね。あの、実際にやはりあの、福島に来ていただくと分かるんですけども、すべての地域で多分海外の方に伝わるほど、こ
とても大きなその風評被害に立ち向かうツールになると思いますし、はい、あのその実際の数値がどう,かこうどうのこうのというよりもそういう姿勢を保てることが農業者が次の時代にまた向かっていけるっていうとても大きな部分なんですね。ですので個人レベルで誰でも簡単にある一定のクオリティをこうせるようなそういうものがあれば。は地域にとって非常に心強い、うん、あの勇気が、はい、あの出てくるものになるんじゃないかというふうに思います。あ、はい、ありがとうございます。あのー、ぜひちょっとこういった取り組みを皆さんに知っていただける、はい、今回第1回ということで、はい、はい、あのじゃあちょっとこれ最後にもう時間がそろそろあれなので最後にちょっと今のお話を記者さんにあの博士に。翻訳してそれでちょっとあのと締めたいと思うんですがはいあドクターケイシャいや、okay. uh, okay. um, so, um, so he's really、uh, he, show, he gave me very positive comment about your technology it might be very big, big you know、um, very influential and then encourage young farmers and、uh, not only young farmers but all farmers in Japan This is that the method, you know, they can apply individually, and then it's gonna be very powerful to against those kind of rumor damages, you know, by themselves. So he would be really happy to, you know,、uh, support and implement to your technology in the future. I think what we got to do after this workshop, if you can <laughs> organize a, like a, a small group. To the professor, the farmer,、mm-hmm. and other farmers, then we can、mm-hmm. go directly into line by line what to do and how to do it. Okay, that would be great. はい、あのーまあ、この次の,あの段階としてぜひあのこういう形で、まあ、あの教授サイエンティストの方たちや、まあ、農家の方たちと直接もうあのケシャ博士がどんどんお話をしてであの技術の方の支援をやっていきたいということですので、はい、本当に今日はあのー、ちょっと不慣れな部分もあって大変恐縮でしたがあのこれをきっかけにいろいろとまた進めていって<笑>すいません<笑>ありがとうございます。ドクターケイシャ、I think a Japanese participant have to leave now, but、uh, can we continue to ask you several questions about the radioactive pro-、uh, Yeah, the、no、global process afterwards. Okay, so we have、yes. to say goodbye and thank you to the Japanese p a r t i c i p a n t Thank you very much, i n d i a n Thank you very much. 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 Just one second. Rick, do you have、uh, everybody online or do you have enough online? Or do you, can you bring if anybody wants to ask questions from outside online? We have seven people right now.、Um, let me see, six, seven, eight, including myself. We can take a couple more people easily、um, and still do screen sharing or video. Rick? Okay, so if you have a second, uh, uh, Vin, uh, Vince wanted to、yeah, say something. Meeting as well. Pardon? Say again, Vince.、Uh, we, have, we have nine people in the go to meeting that can ask questions as well. Okay, let them ask the question. No problem.、Um, we can join the meeting, they can ask it themselves, or they can write it in.、Um, carry on. Oh, okay.、Um, should I?、Uh, okay, so let me just, just a few questions for the, some practical、yeah. questions. Yeah. Okay, so. You got to explain that you're going to say it so, in Japanese or is it getting translated in Japanese? Hi. Okay,、uh, I, I'm going to ask in English first. And then,、yeah. uh, so when we do the decontamination activity ourselves, how many volunteers, how many、uh, people、uh, are the best size to apply this work? It depends so, on the it, size of the farm and the farmer group. I think this is done、mm-hmm. better as a group.、Uh, okay. it, as Than individuals.、Mm-hmm. 
その活動を始めるにあたり、具体的な人数、またグループっていうのは、どのぐらいの単位になると思うんでしょうかうこれに関してはあの、特に決まった決まりはないんですけども、やはりあの個人ではなくグループでスタートするということは、とても大切なことだと思います。Yes. And uh, uh, I think the Fukushima now is quite freezing and might have snow also. So the, the temperature is below the freezing point level. So, can the work be done in this condition as long as farmer can cultivate the land? Or, we can cultivate I mean, the temperature is going、yeah. to be yes, quite b e f o r the results. Uh, the, no, this is the beauty with nanomaterials, especially these new materials, that、um, they are independent of the condition. The, these kind of materials can be used in the high temperature or at、uh, very low temperatures. That's why they are called, we call them GANs,、mm-hmm. we call them new state of matter we finally discover. Mm-hmm. Somebody's banging a lot of doors in the background.、Mm-hmm. Um, so,、uh, mm-hmm. what do you call it?、Um, they, they are not environmentally dependent. They are dependent on their internal magnetic gravitational fields. That's why, when you look at the、uh, end of the, near the middle of the tape to the end, where we show the white stuff in the container. Uh, where I show you where I mix the white,、um, what you call liquid, into the bigger container, and then I'll show it. We have heated this material to a high temperature, it doesn't get destroyed. We have frozen it, it doesn't get destroyed. We put acid on it, we put alkalines on it, we have put a car acid in it, we have put、um, even caustic into it to see if we can boil it with other things. It doesn't make any difference. This material. As a superconductor, is,、um, it's very much、uh, gravitational magnetic field dependent, not the environmental dependent.、Um, if you want to translate. はいえー、と温度の方あの今、まあ、福島は氷点下に近い場所もあるということであのそういった、まあ、凍ってしまったような場合でもあの除染は可能なのかということなんですが、まあ、ビデオでご覧いただいた通りあり大変その耐性の強いあの、まあ、ケミカルですねあのマテリアル材料を使って物質を使っての除染ができますので、まあ、ものすごく高温であっても、まあ、あの氷点下であってもあのまあ酸化しているあのアシートを加えるような状態であってもあの可能ですということです。Thank you. You're and、uh, last one. Uh, so it's going to be the last one. Uh, uh, so, so also the, about the food contamination. But even that the food which is already processed, like a dried or canned, preserved, something like that, is it, could be, is it possible to decontaminate with your technology? Yes, use、also? the same process. Yes, use the same、mm-hmm. process. Use the same process. It's just、mm-hmm. how somebody、okay. is banging a lot of drawers around there.、Um, so, what.、Um, mm-hmm. What you can do, you can decontaminate more or less a lot of things、uh, through this process. But you have to find out how you're going、mm-hmm. uh, to accommodate the material to be within the food. You cannot allow a direct contact between, the, between these materials because they are, they are、mm-hmm. nano materials and、uh, they cannot be digested or cannot be swollen in. Mm-hmm. So, you have to make it like a small barrier between the two. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Is there any other questions we can answer? Yes. Well, I had a question. Hi, John. Good morning. Yes, this is John the a i Good morning. I would have a question. I saw in the video that you use、uh, soda.、Yeah. Could any other、uh, hydroxide c o u l d be used to, to, the same, to, to get the same、uh, results? 
course. Uh, uh, you can you can use a mixture. Of, you can use a mixture of potassium. Uh, you can use um, uh, materials which can allow the interaction and the release of high energies. Uh, a nitrogen, high energy nitrogen yes. mix can be used too, but this, this depends what material you're using and what you want to attract. Uh, you can add. So, uh, I'm going, I'm going Pardon? You can use ammonia. Ammonia, am ammoniac? Yes, you can use ammoniac, but you have to understand. You make Pardon? Hello? I have been used, I have been, yes, hello, hello. Uh, uh, do you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, uh, so I've been uh, using ashes and extracting the, uh, the, all the hydroxides, and they are very strong hydroxides extracted from ashes. That should bring be, it with you. Let's have a look. It must be very interesting. Yes, okay, I'll bring that. <laughs> what happened? This is the beauty with this uh, technology. Uh, uh, it's a beginning. Everybody can this uh, can bring yeah. their own thoughts and their expertise and we, collectively we succeed. Yes, my uh, idea was the reactors, the ceramic reactors, yes, would I be know. to uh, make uh, to make a vaporization of copper inside. That could be then uh, non laid. Uh, yes, that's one way to do it. You can do it. That's what I said. The future of the technology in reactor side mainly sits in ceramic. I know, I know what I'm talking about, and that's one of the reasons we, we, what do you call it? We welcome you to the institute. The, you understand? Yes, I understand. Understand absolutely clearly. Yeah. Yes. Uh, because this has to be collectively yeah. from all directions. Yes, we, and uh, uh, well, what are so certain? Uh, sorry, carry on. I'm listening. Yes, okay, uh, okay. Uh, what I saw uh, in the video uh, is very interesting. I did see some uh, way of making nanomaterials that was uh, described on the YouTube. This is very easy and it's uh, very interesting to see this uh, the way of having the coatings made on the, uh, the, the material. So it's, uh, it is a, uh, an opening in, the, in my understanding uh, 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 as it is now. I think this is going to be a shock to a lot of nano companies, nano technologies around the world. Nobody can patent it. That's what we said. When we start releasing technologies, because it's public information, nobody can patent it anymore. So it's for you to use to your own benefit. Yes, These are ease. You're welcome. You're welcome. Uh, any other question? Hello. Is there anybody or am I left in the space on my own? No, 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 Mr. Cash, we're here. Okay, yeah, is there any other questions? Excellent. Thank you for sharing this. Uh, is there anybody else on the line? Yeah, I, I'm here also, Mr. Cash. Hi, hi, Elia, I can see you. Let me, explain, let me explain something with this video. The last maybe three minutes of this video will set the exact scene and the pattern of our work. When I said by, by February we'll go ahead with different direction, and by June we'll enforce the world peace through the way we are working, um, you can see how. 
now scientists around the world will go crazy within the next two or three months trying to produce these nano layers, but there are different methods of doing it. We show a way, but if you're producing reactors and you're trying to nano coat it, let me advise you in a very, very simple way. Do not, do not put your reactor upside down into the liquid. If I understand, if you under, if I can explain it this way, you put your let's say caustic on the bottom of the container. You measure the amount of liquid you need in your reactor to do the job. And then you put the reactor in and you fill it up with the, with the, with the water or with the liquid, with the hot liquid. Because this way you get the uniform uh, coating. So you put your half moon or your uh, reactor facing down, downwards. If you have a hole on the top of your core, you allow the, that the water and the steam can come through it very rapidly. This way, you don't get any residual in your coating, and you get a uniform coating of your, uh, of your core. If you turn it upside down and you fill it in with, uh, let's say, caustic, and you put water, boiling water in it, or liquid in it to do the job to the top of the, your container, then you find out the caustic's material will go into the pores of the nano material, and then you get a disturbed magnetic field. So what you got to do, make sure you have a hole where the steam can come out or the water can come out, and you always do the processing upside down, which means you only get the water, the heat, the, the, the material, but you get a uniform coating with no impurities in it. This is a big tip. You will understand when you run your reactors, this is as good as building the whole reactor. The other tip I can give you is make sure that you leave, if you've got two half cores, you leave a connection point between the two half cores. Because when you coat this way, you'll find out the top half will not communicate with bottom half and you have unstable reactors for anything. And then you say it doesn't work. If you have a screw system, you make sure there is connections built, especially between the two halves. If you have a flat plate half moon like our friends did in Malta, you make sure that the two halves are insulated because you have a half moon system. You have to remember certain procedures. You, when you take your reactor out of the liquid after let's say 24 hours, immediately put it in a sealed container which will be a little bit of the same caustic water on the bottom of it. Don't put a fresh water. Use the same material, but underneath your plate, and you make a connection between your reactor and the plate. This is very important. What does this mean? You get a voltmeter, you get a ammeters or whatever, you put it on small 200 millivolts, you put one point on your reactor Hello? body and one point on the metal base. That Hello? you repeat this every few centimeters around your core. So what happened? You make a uniform layering. Then what you have, you have an to incoming do, call from ninth you take it out after 24, you do repeat this connection three, four times. Then you take your reactor core out and you put it back in the first container where you had the liquid and you repeat the whole process. You put caustic at the bottom, 
you put Hello? the reactor in. You repeat, you leave it for 24 hours. You take it out, put it back in the bin, in your mesh, do the same process, and you put the same contain, the same system again two days later back in the caustic. This way, it allows you to bring that, what I've been always talking about, the powder dust. You create layers of compressing gravitational magnetic field, which releases your ultraviolet, and at the same time, like a, a sponge, cuts into the plasma and allows the plasma energy to be released. These are the, uh, what do you call it, the secrets of this technology. Now we opened it up. This is, I know today, Italian scientists around the world will listen to this. But these are, as I said, we open all the doors. Nothing is kept behind. So it's no use for you to come in back and saying in two weeks time, oh, we tried it, it didn't work. Listen clearly to the procedure I explained. If you can, I, it takes me sometimes up to a month, two months to code a reactor. It's better to code a reactor properly than just trying to test something half cooked. Repeat the process and you will see it. If you, you, if you try this on a piece of, let's say, copper and repeat the process and get the air blow on it, you will see it just like dust blows off the top. Other thing is, do not, under no circumstances, touch the core once it's coated. Do not blow at it because your, 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 your breath has protein in it. Keep your system, if you're not working in a sealed container, always in a plastic container. Do not use metals. These are a few things which can give you uh, guidance with. What you have to do, it's very, very, very critical. Under no circumstances ever touch these materials with bare hand. Two, three layers of gloves. Always monitor your own body in a very simple way when you're working with these kind of nano materials. These are ganses, these are not nano layers anymore. What happened is, if you get it absorbed into your body, you always work with these things, monitor your excrement, monitor your, when you go to, to do a piss. You look for the color and the shape. If the change of the color in excrement goes towards orange to yellow, you stop. It means you've contaminated yourself. There is a way to clean up nano materials out of the body in a very effective way. There is a product, it's a natural product in the market. You can buy it from herb shops. This material brings your stomach, your liver and your pancreas back into order. Uh, the the material, you can drink uh, about five or ten drops of it two or three times a day. If you have a blood condition, you do not touch it because it's a blood thinner. Um, the, uh, the material has to be handled through, a, through you can buy it from, from herb, herbalist. It's used for all sorts of diseases. So, you wait till you see balance back in your body before you go any further. I sometimes accidentally touch things and walk away for weeks just to, see, to just get the stability back. The contamination through magnetic field is much more dangerous than the contamination through nuclear material if you do not know what to do. So, as I said, we open the whole door. This, when, you, when you give a toy to a child, you've got to tell him what are the dangers with it. So these are the dangers with it. Always never breathe into your, into your system. Always stay clear of the system. Never ever try to touch. Once you coat it, do not touch your coating anymore. 
That's it. That's how it's going to be. Uh, you have to accept it. Uh, when you take the reactor apart, there is no radiation because these materials decompose radiation out of themselves. So you are always in a free radiation zone. This is the secret which we developed walking away from nuclear development. I should say thank you again to the, to the uh, Belgians in trying to push us away from nuclear. What I just told you in the past 10 minutes has taken me over 20 years to develop. So you are in 10 minutes, 20 years ahead. I hope all of you will be as open as this to share your knowledge and don't hide it in patents and other things. So uh, you can go to your reactors and by the next workshop, and when we have the workshop with the knowledge seekers, you can tell us the performance of your reactor. Do not, do not release huge amount of gases into your reactor because it does the job of the blowing, it destroys the coating. So you release small expanded amount of gases into your reactor when you start producing or performance of the reactor. The other thing is always build your reactors in an isolated condition electrically because the and if you carry a metal reactor, make sure you have a total insulation condition. Because the energy can reverse back, we have lost a lot of power supplies. So, if you want to drain energy, you can do it. You, your generators, your power supplies become a generator. You will see the reverse current flows. At the same time, you have to understand exactly how you operate your reactors and how you build your reactors. Just don't jump in, you think you know the secret, now you're going to do it. You're going to put yourself in more danger than anything else. Any questions? The question would be, what is the verb you are talking about? What? The herb that should be used for decontamination of the nanomaterial we would have absorbed. Um, if you wait what? two seconds, if you wait two seconds, I'm going to get it. You talk among each other till I come back. Two seconds. Uh, we are through a, a very good interest and interesting uh, aspect of the technology. Yes, <clears throat> lots of very, very good information. Um, you have an incoming have call from Kishi Plasma Reactor course. Group. But um, uh. we haven't had the the knowledge to go further than just thinking about, you know, the ways that he's talking about. Um, obviously, oxidization was among our conversations a lot, and we just didn't know where to go from there, but this shows us where to go. Okay, the material is called Ruta. R-U-T-A. You can buy it in drops, and you cannot take more than five to ten drops sometime a day if you have a blood condition, because it's a blood thinner, but it's one of the effective things I find with uh, with radiation contamination and, uh, what do you call it, with uh, GANS and nanomaterial contamination. This is developed so in... Mr. Cash, would this be... It's the oil of Ruta. Sir, would this be a replacement for the potassium iodide pill? Pardon? Can you repeat the question? Would it be a substitution for a potassium iodide pill? Um, 
In some cases, yes, but this is a natural process. Um, this is a natural material. I um, I get this material especially from a place in Belgium. I know you can buy it in the markets. It's used for a lot of infections and everything, but it's one of the best things to clean up with radiation and uh, what do you call it, nano and gas materials with me. It might be different, but it has a side effect that's worse than the aspirin in thinning the blood. And so you have to watch. You cannot take it more than two or three days. And you have taken it in different doses. I th I'm sure Dr. Elia can tell us about it more than anybody else. These are uh, herbs used and they've been used for centuries. But it works because you've got to understand um, the reality that because our body is made of cans, our muscles are against the state. That's why the minute you touch your fingers, you feel it in your brain. They're superconductors. As I explained in the video, your amino acids, they behave superconductors because there are gases in a, or molecules in a cancer state. So um, these materials, which like um, Ruta, are in the are part of the structure which works with the Gans state. They are made of the same thing. So uh, you don't need to fight the radiation. You can do it in a simple way with, uh, with this material. It works with me as, and it's been a pleasure for me to use this for past nearly three, four years. I buy it from, uh, or I get it from a place in Ardennes in the west in the west uh, west of belgium in luxembourg there is a shop there they sell it the best quality i've seen next so this is obviously what you were talking about when because uh, it's a herb uh, <clears throat> excuse me when you take a herb uh, mm. that is closest to your magnetic field due to it being grown closer to the ground. This is what you were talking about? Exactly. Exactly. You have a very good memory. Mm, uh, this is part of the structure, part of the understanding of our needs. It's very much like we have to understand the process changes when we go to space. Um, in uh, I don't know if you know about a, a moon phase, you, you, if you listen to uh, space programs like with NASA, they, they're scientists known as having a moon phase because of the gravitational change and magnetic change in the station or in the space, the shape of the body cha phase changes to like a full circle. All the astronauts' faces changes. The same thing is part of the understanding how you grow these things near the Earth. So you can't use this material up in the in the space in a no gravity zone, because this material is deep. It comes from the root. It comes from the ground, and the the the, the gravitational magnetic field has a different effect in the space. These are the things which scientists have to understand how to work with within the body of the man. I have to add one thing. I do have some ruta in my garden. Yeah, but you need a ruta extract, huh? <laughs> and the extract is uh, or sh sh should not. It should not be difficult to to to, cr to, to make. produce. No, no, it's not difficult. But uh, but not everybody has a ruta in the back garden, huh? Uh, so you have yes, to find. <laughs> I used to go around the fields with my <laughs> wife and dig it, dig it out. Huh? It's a big, heavy roots and whatever it is, the roots and things. So you have you you have you have a wife like mine who's uh, deep into herbs and things, and you go out and dig the garden or somebody's backyard because there is something in there you you know you want to have. But so usually people get it from me. Got to buy it from reputable places. Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> there is there is a there is a there is a producer of these uh, material in Ardennes. Uh, they it's a family business. They they produce uh, all the herbs themselves. And um, if you've been to the meetings of the Cash Foundation, uh, you have made the you have met the lady who is the operator of this business. And they 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 literally produce um, their own pure materials. Next question. I just want to ask which part from Ruta have to use? Please. I don't know. <laughs> okay. I don't so know. <laughs> buy them. I, I, it is. Um, <laughs> make uh, a salad. I, I make a salad, yeah. But no, it's just I buy the way it is. It's one of the best things for uh, malaria as well because I carry it with me to Africa. Yeah, uh, I know. Uh, it's, it's, yes, yes. Yeah. So next question. So is root is ruta as effective as um is ruta as as effective as MSN for um curing malaria? Some people believe so. Some people believe so. I've never used it. I, I rely on tablets and God knows everything else. I use usually what they call African aftershave, which is the mosquito spray. You know, when if, if you worked in Africa, as long as okay. I have worked, been there, uh, you smell the tourists because they all smell of the, what do you call it, mosquito spray. Well, this is what we call the African after stay. <laughs> if you if you if you put perfume on within minutes, yeah. you'll have a party of mosquitoes on your skin. They come yeah. to you up. So this is people locals, what they call expats, have got used to it. You don't see, but when you oh, these are tourists, you know. So it's very easy to smell. We call it the we call it African aftershave. <laughs> yes. Okay. Uh, lemon grass has the same effect. For um. the Pardon? I said lemon grass. Lemon grass, yes. For the mosquitoes. For mosquitoes, yeah. Uh, in part of Africa, they grow it for that. But some people can't even afford that. The beauty of this technology is, as I worked for a long time in Africa, I know what this technology can do to the continent in changing a lot of things, in, in increasing the harvest, uh, allowing medication to be at the reach of everyone at literally no cost, because now we start opening the medical side. Uh, then you can understand something hidden in the video. If you look at the video which we just released, go back to the last 10 minutes, you see a black uh, flask on the table, yeah, where I picked the magnet up from. Uh, this black flask is one of the thermoses we use for medical application. And the same kind of nanomaterials is you produced and kept in these glass, in these jars, in a different active dynamic way. Um, so what you see is one of the most advanced health technologies sitting on that table. But because you're not aware of, you don't know what you see. And as I said we open the doors of technology in a very radical way in a very radical way. So this material can be used uh, in Africa for uh, by just giving the water to people in, as, a, as a malaria, they just to drink a water can save a life, cost nothing. Uh, I have seen my own workers in Africa going on the floor, shaking like crazy for 12 and a half English pence for medicine they don't have to pay, they don't have it. So they go through the problem for two or three days and sometimes lose their life to it. So with this, it free cost. It doesn't need another 12 and a half pence to pay to a doctor to give an injection. 
These are the realities that we are facing. I've seen too much in the world with my own eyes to, to, to understand what it needs to be done. And the roadmap is set to do that. Through the med medical, through the water processing, as you've seen, the way you purify, you can put back in what is needed as nourishment too. So as you take the poison, you can get the same water to become the food for your day, the energy you need to live with, and it costs nothing. If you go too fast, we get shut down. We have all sorts of problems. So slowly, slowly, it's taken me years of pain taking patience to see it through. But now we, everything is getting released in one go. Um, you can use these materials and the system we showed in miniature to feed the nation. You just put a fountain where people come just to drink water. The water becomes their food. You don't need refugee camps and people waiting for sacks of rice to arrive from somewhere. You have energy, you carry on. Doesn't matter what you digest. <laughs> Mehran? Yes. Please, um, I, for, for what it's worth, I, I, um, I know this is quite understated as a way of sharing, sharing this, but I'm very thankful. Um, I really appreciate you sharing this this way. And I'll, I'm looking forward to um, working with this technology um, with groups Who's that speaking? I'm working with will be able to put this to use. And I look, this is Mark Hosa in Australia. Yes, what has happened, the truth is, you see a lot of people, I keep on saying, they don't know about my background. They just all think I'm just a cash foundation. I have, I, I have run, uh, as I said before, multinational businesses around the world, and not just on the telephone. I've been on the ground, I've been on, on the fields, I've been in the factories where, where I owned and when I ran and when I collaborated with governments. When I tell you I've seen a guy dying because of 12 cents, at least my own staff, my own workers. I've seen my own workers in Siberia, in Kazakhstan, who could not afford even food after the Eastern Bloc opened. Um, I've seen the harshness and I've seen people who wear, ladies who wear shoes with uh, emeralds and all sorts of things just to be on the shoe that they can show their wealth. I've eaten on the boat tables with the people on the land and the people on the most richest tables on the boat. And I know one is doing to the other. If you push one too far, the other one jumps off the table. But if you allow it the way we are doing it, we'll get through. The reality is the richest nations in the world cannot feed their own nationals anymore. Two ways. We provide it with them, they understand the process, the way we are doing. Or we show the other way around, which can be done with force, with, with brutal way of which is used up to now. We don't do it. When people make the change, they stick with the change. When you force the change, they'll fight it. So this way, with the release of technology, the way we have started from today, uh, is we allow the people to, to make the change. And that, that is the great change which comes. You've seen the technology in its rawest form. I cannot be any more raw. The, 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 the place you've seen, which we demonstrate, this is the lab which is we are setting up for the knowledge seekers. This is where they do their job. They, they do the development, their ideas, and they set it out. We give them all the facilities, but it's them to, to, to do the job. But this can be repeated anywhere in the world. You can do it in a small farm. In, uh, in Australia, you have a lot of drought. It takes you, if you understood this system, and if you listen to what I explained to our Japanese professor, uh, you should be able to produce hundreds of gallons of water in the most driest part of Australia. The driest part on this planet, always say, carries minimal 15% moisture. The way you attract cesium from the ground, build a system which attracts moisture from the air. Then you continuously deliver 
you can do you can grow god knows all the ships on the on this planet in in, in our continent of australia with plenty of water this water immigration like japan like china is doing in south america because of the water they don't have the land and the water and they're using argentina or brazil or the farms in africa because of the rain they cannot do it in their own land if our chinese friends understand it you don't need to immigrate to another part of the world to to rob to feed your own nation this what you see on that table today is a total oasis system energy food water and warmth is all being shown on one table i think if people ever understand what this video <laughs> is this this video is your life you carry this knowledge with you to a space this you can amazing. stay alive this is a planet that's how conditions are well Miran, we we're also we have we have um we'll be actively able to work with this in, in Bangladesh as well. We have, um, we're working on drinking water. We were looking for um, something for um, a way to make drinking water from air in an affordable way. And hey, it's amazing if you, to see this. I'm so if, excited. Let me, let me explain to you an alternative. Um, Dark Lorenz can tell you mm. this. He was present in the in the trials and or in the test in Ghent University with me. Uh, these materials, if you heat them up like the copper wire you've seen, if you heat them up to a very high temperature, because what happened? You put a current to it. We've done this for um, the, what they call it, the, a group which we are investing with IMAC in Belgium for um, diamond switching. And we tested this material. So what happens is that if you heat up this, after you've done your coating, and then you heat up the, the, bar, the copper wire to a very high temperature that the copper melts, and if you can hold it in an angle that the copper can run out, you have the real, real nanotube. The origin, this is, this is the, this is what we call the black hole. This is what we call the, um, the zero tunnel. So if you can put these and you can spend time to make these, it, it takes you about 10 cents, I think, maybe a dollar. You cut the copper wires the way you see in that box I have, where I show them tangled together. And then you hold them in a position, maybe straight up, and you heat them in an the oven that the copper can run out. The material with the stay itself is very strong. So now you have a hollow tube. Place these on a mat or a mat of sand. These are the best filters for the contamination of radioactive material or any material. And then you can wash them and then put them back in again. What we did in Belgium in, in, uh, in uh, what do you call it, uh, in tests, is that when you heat them up, we put a torch onto it. We literally melted the copper. And then when you take the temperature away, the coating becomes the container and the, co this, the, the copper solidifies in the container, in the nano coating. So these are diamonds. These are diamond structures, but in a GANS and a, and a nano layering GANS. So they are they're literally dis, dis, destructible. You cannot destroy them. You can change them to powder, but they keep their characteristic. So uh, if you are doing water decontamination in, in Japan, this is one of the ways to do it. You empty, you heat up the very high temperature in the furnace or with a gas torch that the copper runs out of the tube. And you put these tubes as a mixture within even a sand or within, the, it has to be something which cannot block them. And you just put your water on top of it. And then you'll find out it's a filtering. You have to understand the size. The size is very important. This technology can be used for AIDS, for example. A red cell is 10 micron, or 10, what do you call it, uh, 
nanolayer thick. Eight cell is 11 nano. So if you can make a filter which is 10, you can purify the blood. There is no need for dialysis in the space. We can build these to be in the blood vein and replace them. You don't need, you don't need, you can do the same purification with water, you can do the same purification with air. And they can be washed very easy, so if they get clocked up, you clean them and you put them back in the place. This could be very handy for you in Bangladesh. This is one of the ways to, to do with the malaria. You can run these things into into uh, into the contaminated waters, and you can literally pick up the mosquito seeds, or what do you call it, the eggs. There are different ways of developing it. Now another question. No more questions. Oh, we have that bird again. Hello, have you finished? So Rick is not able to speak because he lost the microphone. I would like to ask him. Yeah, yes. if some other questions. Okay. I'll, I'll ask a question if I could then. That's um, Mark again. I'm, I'm wondering if um, I heard you correctly before, Miran, is um, is this, um, are these balls, are these nano, nano balls, are they spherical? Um, if you make them into the GANS, yes. There are different processes to make them a GANS, well, or you can you make it to a nano layer. Um, if, you, if you want to understand the difference, next time when you eat meat, mm. look at the structure of the flesh of the animal. If you see, they, they are not like a piece of metal stuck together. They are like little balls which are interconnected and they make the fiber. Yeah? And if you look in detail, is balls connected to each other. We see this ball separation very much in the structure of the brain. Different balls of different uh, magnetic gravitational field strength make the different layers of the brain. We don't see muscle and tissues, but each gravitational magnetic field ball has different uh, uh, conductivity strength and directional strength. And that's why in the brain you don't have no lines because the balls communicate within the structure of themselves in the direction. This will open a lot in the world of medicine. So there are, and then you so, get them. So this is you the get reason the balls, I asked. Yeah, but, you, but let me, maybe I couldn't explain it to you. You get the balls as a GANS, but in, an, in a nano layer, in, a, in one layer. Do you understand? So you get a, if you, if you can imagine. Yeah, okay. You, yes. you have, you have, you have a bunch of uh, marbles in a tube. Yeah. Uh, this is the structure of the fiber of the body. This is literally the structure of your neurosystem. If you hit the ball on the top, you get the vibration to the bottom ball. But if you hit the ball on the side, you get no yes. vibration anywhere else. This is the conductivity and behavior of the superconductors and the GANS. So you can make a nano layer of GANS materials, which is the structure of your body. Here's, here's the specific reason of what I was trying to understand if you if you said this because there's another material that I'm aware of um, that is um, proprietary that has the that's a nano uh, a nano material um, that can absorb radiation and then release it and store it in energy as a battery as, as in actually becomes a battery for yeah, absorbing see, radiation yeah, the we, environment and using it as a battery. Yes, we work with, uh, we, we try to do this work with 
you know the continental tire continental well-known tire manufacturers in europe they have yes. a division they have a division which is involved in they are very heavily involved in batteries and production of batteries energy units is part of their side work we done some work or what do you call it we talked to them some times ago and it's the way I was trying to explain to them, but they cannot, they couldn't understand it that time. They're still in their dreamland with it. Uh, the, <clears throat> the, uh, the easiest way I can say, look at the same, uh, if you put these marbles, which we play with, in a ball. Put them in a glass ball. Put hundreds of marbles you play with in a big glass ball. You see that uh, there, even though they are packed together, there are gaps in between them because of their shape. The same thing happens in nano layers, and the same thing happens in Gans nano layers, or a Gans structure. There's this these balls, even though in touch with each other, there are gaps in between them. So these gaps where you store the energy. That's why if you listen to the tape, I tell you, this is a nanomaterials are PN junctions, capacitors. Okay, this okay. is one of the first things we discovered about 10 years ago. We published it, and we know the people who got the Nobel Prize in Manchester University, they've been sitting on our website, everything, and they've tried to publish it as their own work, but that's their job. But most of the thing which we discovered with nanotechnology used to be on... Cash Foundation technology website, uh, well read by the by our Nobel Prize winners in Manchester University, and they they but now nobody can patent anything because it's all in public has been in public. If they tell you this is uh, priority right, um, we have a video of it. It's been on the internet for two or three years, so it's public information. Nobody can block anything to do with this technology anymore. Says. The only proprietary is if nobody knows about it. And we cover the patents in a way that everybody knows about everything. I should thank Dirk. I don't know if he's not with us today. I know he's traveling very soon. Um, is the way he's written the patents. He's written the patents the way he works in a cunning way that he covers all aspects. <clears throat> Next question. Fabulous. I'm very happy to hear it. Thank you. Thank you, Mara. You're welcome. Is there anything else or any other question on the forums or a chat room? Well, I, I, I have, I have many questions I could ask, um, but we've gone. This has gone for maybe a little while, so maybe you want to have a rest, perhaps. And I would no like problem. to Can't communicate with you directly if, if it's possible. Is we discuss everything in the workshops because then everybody can use it maybe in the future for different ideas. Um, the, is there anything, Elia or yes. Rick, on the line? Any questions you want us to ask? I'm here and Rick is not able to speak because he lost the microphone. And, uh, he lost? Yeah, if someone has a question. I think we lost Yuko as well. She's disappeared. Uh, she's not contactable. Uh, is there anything else on the streamlines you want to ask? From my side, no questions. I got a quick question. I don't know. Hi, Ludmil. Yeah, hi. I don't know if you can hear me. I'm calling through go through meetings, so I don't know what's happening. Yes. Yet. Okay. Um, I got a quick question. So you cover copper with uh, KOH or NaOH, and I that creates it. No, no, I, don't I don't cover it. No. You don't cover it. I think you've got the yeah, whole well, thing. you you. you Create the nano layer there, but yes, uh, my not. question is uh, in different uh, aspect. Uh, if you have, um, let's say, aluminum and uh, same NaOH, is it gonna be the same magraph, or I guess no, it's different? And that's supposed. post. Supposed to attract different material than, let's say, radioactivity. Of course, 
Yes. But different radioactivity. Each material has a capacity yeah. different. Uh, something which you, yeah, you so. let me let me explain something that's uh, not going far from what you said. Uh, what you see as nano layers, the black stuff or the cans of layers as powder. For you to be able to see a nano layer, it has to be at least maybe ten to twenty thousand layers thick. You can't see nano layer with naked eye. So as you have layers on top of layers on top of layers, you create the same thing as I said about the marbles in a bowl where they're stuck together. And these layers create different magnetic gravitational fields as more and more of them they interact and they get built up on top of each other. And if you if you look at um, if you get a nano layer and put them in, they are not all in the same position, so you create a spectrum of gravitational magnetic fields strength in 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 one layer. So you don't absorb only one, or you don't attract only one kind of field of strength. You create a spectrum depending on the physical structure as well. So you need, uh, with aluminium you create something else, with titanium you create something else, with um, gold you create different condition, and you can even make hydrogen and oxygen nano layers and nanomaterials through GANS system. So uh, each layer, each material creates different gravitational magnetic pool. So is it somehow a table or something which we can use to know what we create? Oh, I think we leave these with like the guys. Uh, some some reference things. material or something. So these are future, uh, future, what do you call it, research and data. That's what the theoretical business is. If you, if you understand it, if I can explain it, is you go into a tunnel of a maze of tunnels. It's like when you go into the case with a few exits. As you go into these tunnels, you have different wind and different temperatures and different climates. It's the same thing with the nano layers. So different climates because the temperature is different or the speed of the wind in that part of the tunnel is different. So is the same thing happens, but now with magnetic field, gravitational field through these layers of nanomaterial. How is going to, who is going to measure what? Uh, it will be a spectrum. Everything with nano layers and gas nano layers is a spectrum, it's not one specific. Then you have a, another problem if you make a dynamic gas system. So this is what we are looking in the next generation of the the space reactors, where instead of filling it up with uh, with gases, we fill them up with uh, gans of CO2. I'm working on this when we done. I don't know. Maybe when the students are here, then you create the condition of the brain of human. That will be the what do you call it? Non wireless uh, connections and the reactors, which the magnetic field will be different. Next question. Well, I can suggest try with wine, it's gonna be a funny reactor. With what? With wine. Wine. At least it's gonna be wine. That is gonna be a happy reactor, that's for sure. <laughs> Any other questions? Some other questions? Yes, uh, yes, Mr. Ketch, it is Luciana. I, I don't know if... Uh, I can hear you. Uh, can we go through? Yes, I can hear you, Luciana. Okay, so I would like to... Oh, okay, thank you. So I would like to, to ask you two 
very quick question. One of these is continuing to your uh, answer to the You have an question. incoming call from so, Ninth Kishi Public Teaching as Workshop, you said, uh, Fukushima. The spectrum of macrobes depends on the material of which you build the nanomaterial. And I'm thinking that the thickness of the uh, nano layer will dictate the amplitude or the, the intensity of the field. If I am correct. You see, yeah, but the problem is if you listen to part of, yeah, in a way you are, uh, don't think about amplitude, you are away from this, this uh, matter situation. Amplitude and what do you call it, uh, the phasing and these things are out of the window. Intensity. You want, yeah. The intensity uh, is the magnetic field, gravitational field, the strength here. Yeah. But you have to be very observant and very careful. The minute you touch these nanomaterials physically to hold, you have crushed them back to matter. This is something you got to. You okay, this is an observation too. Yeah. The minute you touch any, you have, if you want to cut, let's say, a pipe for two meter, let's say, 10 centimeter for a job, you always cut 12 centimeter, where you can hold the you ends without actually call. crushing the whole layer. These are like very, you know, the Napoleon uh, cake, which is layers of uh, cake and cream and cake, you know, what it is, uh, like a, um, very thin yes. this is exactly what nano layers are if you squeeze it the whole thing crushes together so these are the things you have to watch you never uh, if you noticed on the table on the video i put the nails next to each other you don't try to pile on piling on you destroy the layers so you get a minimum the best thing to make these nano layers, these materials, is on like a conveyor belt, that they never come in touch with each other. They never get crushed, you use it. That's why I said, don't touch till the minute oh, okay, you want thank to you, very good. These are the, these are the things you have to, it's, it's literally, as far as it's in Napoleon, I always say, it's like a cake. If you squeeze it, you destroy it. It's a, it's, it's a nano layer, it's just, uh, one times 10 to minus thickness is just no strength on this. Uh, if you try to drill in it, you won't drill in it, but because it's like a U, like a tube, it just crushes down. And the thing is, you will see the difference where you crush the material becomes very shiny. It becomes actually the structure of a diamond, you see it. Yeah? where the other part stays like powdery and fluffy. Any other question? Right, thank you. Very, very good uh, observations. Yeah. And the second question will be uh, taken, for enabling us yes. to, how to, say, to <laughs> learn us. Pardon? No, no, uh, I was referring to the next question. You was having in the video uh, the process of making nano layers from copper and iron to filter cesium and whatever plutonium, whatever is there. But to do some very simple experiments, uh, as for example, to absorb water from atmosphere, uh, what kind of material should be used to create the nano layers? Let's say, for example, to absorb any, any, any will do. Any will do. Any will do. Any material. Any material has the capability of extracting moisture. Any nanomaterial. Well, you got to know how to do it and the way okay. you got to set it up. Um, is this, this is, I don't know if you listen to the conversation which I was trying to explain to the professor that uh, the, the people, we say that these materials can be grown in deserts. You know, you can grow seeds in the dry, driest place in the land. Yeah? They, 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 and then they grow better and they give a five or six or ten times more harvest. This is not a talk because it's been done by the foundation. The foundation has paid for this research. 
We know exactly what we're talking about. What happens in reality when you coat the seed with the material? Now you create a layer of gravitational magnetic field on this seed. The research has shown our people who've done the research, they tell you in their data, because they have a full data for it, depends on how long you put the seed in the, in the moisture, in the water, before you plant it. The timing decides how fast and how late the, the seed will grow. So what you do, you create a nano layer on the skin. And the skin stays with the, with the seed all its life. So now you have a nano layer on the skin of the seed. This nano layer uh, has the capability, because of the ability of this, the, the coating, to extract moisture as it needs from the environment. So it waters itself. And because of the complex structure of the nano layer, uh, oxygen and nitrogen being near to each other, don't forget the layer we use is CO2, uh, and the carbon is on the same, uh, what do you call it, a structure, uh, near enough, then you absorb as much nitrogen as you like from the atmosphere. Then you fertilize and you feed through the same layer. You don't collect tons of moisture, you collect whatever moisture which is near the seed. So seed, uh, it's like uh, you put a cold uh, finger in the hot air and you condense the water drops. The water drops are in the air, but when you, when you create the condition with a cold stick, then you get the moisture. Now these nano layers behave the same but magnetic gravitation. So you absorb the water, moisture from the air, and you absorb the nitrogen from the air the same way, because carbon is 12, nitrogen is 14, and oxygen is 16. It's a near enough magnetic field gravitational field pool. So that's why life exists on this planet. But when you do that, the nitrogen with some helium within the environment releases immediately with the water, the hydrogen, with the energy needed for the growth. Don't forget uh, right, what Thank you it? for the That's spectacular. Plan. I, Pardon? Was, I was having my angle of question because uh, you stated, for example, that iron is going to attract cesium and uh, the copper will no, attract... No, 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 no. Stop, stop, you misunderstood. Yes. You misunderstood. The, the gaps which are created on the nano layers decide what gets attracted. Not the iron or the copper or bronze. The magnetic gravitational fields in those gaps decides the, what material is attracted. Not the material. <coughs> you can create the same condition with glass, maybe, as it has uh, oh, okay. with, the, with the metal. Is that clear? Thank you. That is a very good, uh, uh, how to say, clarification. Yeah, yeah, because if you, if you look at the tape, look at this tape maybe 10, 20 times, and then you understand different things from it. I'm very specific in choice of words in my presentations because it has to be correct. I show you a ring and I put another ring inside it and say this is like cesium. It's not that it's the size of it, it's the gravitational magnetic field the strength of it will attract it to it. When you put two magnets together, one doesn't go inside the other, huh? They sit next to each other. You have an incoming they call from Ninth other. Kishi Public Teaching Workshop. This is the same process. Fukushima. It's not filling the gap, but the gap creates a gravitational magnetic field which can hold that cesium in a floating condition. They don't get attached to each other because it's in a. Right, I understand. <coughs> you understand? So it depends what that layer, and that's what I said just a few minutes ago. Yes, I understand, but I have a. 
ask. The next question will be, and uh, how do you influence the size of the PN junctions on a... Uh, in other words, I'm guessing that putting different chemicals, as you explained, you, you can influence the size of the gaps that you are creating. Um, yes, but that you go with like me. You, yeah, yeah, you go like me and you test materials, huh? You go like me and you test different materials. You, if you add aluminium to your caustic process at the beginning, you get a different process. If you remember in my last talk, when we talked in the last workshop, I was talking about the, the candle holders, the little aluminium candle or the metal candles you put in. You light up when you go to the church, a little round one, so you make your fancy dinner, you put it on the table. If you look at the video, some of them are on the table, right in front of where I put the water inside. You can add, what you add in, you dictate what is going to be in your nano layers too. So composite nano layers is part of the part of their life, and that's how we have different fiber tissues in our body. And part becomes the skin, and part becomes the flesh, and part becomes the blood vessels. You missed that that table. Look at that video once just to see right, what thank you. I mean this is clear. You understand? Hello? Are we there? Hello. Yes, yes, now it's clear. Yeah, very clear. So you that see, also clarified uh, what we discussed in the previous workshop. If you listen to all the workshops we've done and put them all together, you should be in a space by June. Uh, because a lot of things has been given to you. This is what I explained to the... <laughs> to the I'm trying to do, to do some whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> no, but this is what I was explaining to to our Japanese uh, friends on the line before. When we talk, if I go into the details of scientific breakthrough, people don't understand. So we try to make this uh, science in a way that a common man can help himself in, on, on this planet and in this space. I, I explained very clearly that uh, um, the cesium in the water is not doing anything, but part of the cesium, we see reduction in the cesium, is that the nitrogen fertilizers in the land absorb a lot of the radiation from the cesium. But they don't do it fast enough, because um, the, what do you call it, nitrogen has the capability to absorb uh, beta radiation. So what does it do? It goes through the process of water. But this is, if you create the right condition for it to be there, that the cesium behave, but nitrogen behaves as the converter. And if you look at the same process, this is what I explained in your lung, in our medical section with Elia. There is no ever, never, ever a single oxygen passes the wall of the lung. The same process. Yes. You have the hydrogen. Let me explain to you. Our lungs is a nano-layer gas. So the same process happens. So the nitrogen comes with a release of the hydrogen to a helium and a carbon. And that helium nitrogen mixes with the nitrogen itself. Then it gives you the moisture, which is the oxygen and the hydrogen and the water. Oxygen stays as a mixture in, and the hydrogen becomes your energy through your lighting of your red blood cells, that you call it oxygenated. The process is the same all the time. You have to understand how and what material. Yes, you're right, but if I may suggest uh, in, how to say, in our technology workshop and also in the medical with Elia, you could use a more, how to say, technical verbiage because, uh, I mean, here there are doctors who are quite aware of these chemicals and all that stuff, and the technology people are also uh, aware of these uh, conditions. So, yes, uh, we, have, we have the farmers, we have... Videos, we have the we have the farmers in Japan who are trying to save their lives. They have as much right. 
They have to understand the whole lot. And we have people in Africa are listening to try to save their lives. Right. What I was saying is, uh, with uh, that video that you released today, uh, you it was very clear and explained this compacting and uh, creating these magraphs, which each and every layer of nanomaterial, which uh, makes a lot of sense for the technical people, and they know how to take it from here. And I of course, so. there'll be more questions for you. Yeah, no problem, no problem. The thing is, I, I we've seen the first practical ways of people like uh, um, Nukeo trying to run a workshop in Japanese today. This is a miniature workshop that this is what's going to happen with uh, our knowledge seekers in two or three weeks time here. They have to run these workshops. They have to talk to their scientists and for them to understand it or somebody to explain to the scientists what it is and how we do it and what's the reason behind it. When it comes to a specific, a specific conditions, we have right, to... Right, and if I may science. make another opinion. Yeah. Go ahead. Oh, okay, and if I may have an opinion, uh, once, uh, let's say, we, the technical people and the medical people, do understand, we can, how to say, very fast uh, train uh, people, let's say, in engineering, in their own language, uh, and they will, uh, well, they will understand very fast and accurate. Now you know why we, we, we start bringing knowledge seekers and we chose a specific people for a specific jobs. At the same time, I'm not a very good communicator, so these people can communicate in different languages that you can understand. Uh, through the workshops and through the knowledge seekers workshops, we should be able to train two to three million people by the end of this year. Easy. Because when you start doing things, you, you manufacture the things. But my only wish is that none of you ever patent anything. Because if you do it, then you, you broke the whole. You're back to the cycle of the, what do you call it, uh, Rothschilds and apples and the rest. You have enough. We, we have taught you enough to, to, to make, a, make a life easy and comfortable at the same time. For the ones who understand better, should make facilitate for the others to to be able to to learn and do it. And as I said, the knowledge seekers of today will become the teachers of next couple of months or so. And you people outside, as a specialist, have to support them in what it is and how you can facilitate them. This video we release today will put shock behind a lot of top nations from tomorrow. I promise you by 3 o'clock this afternoon, the White House will be fully aware of what's on this, on, this, on this video. The same as the Japanese government will be listening. Because now they understand how you as normal people have come in position of the technology, which was a dream technology for human race. Now you see how it's done, you see the effectiveness of it. Um, I, um, Rick sent me an email with an attachment that somebody in Russia has done a test with an English guy or somebody showing that how nanomaterials float. We already knew this. We knew this 10 years ago, but we never published. We don't publish it, but so scientifically it's there. There, the, the contamination, but now producing nanomaterials at such a no cost opens up totally different technology. Opens up. If you, if you, what I told you about the nanotube, if you touch it, it crushes. Uh, the professors in Ghent University, they try to use this as a brake system, the property of this, this, this crushing of the nanomaterial. And what it is, if you look at the new bicycles or new cars brake system, it's got holes in it. They, they deliberately create holes in the brake disc because it speeds up the, the braking system. Now look at the nanomaterial. These holes are naturally in there. So if you make a steel, a brake steel, and coat it with nanomaterial with these natural holes in it, you'll see what happens. You have a brake disc which never gets damaged, but at the same time, you have the best brake system because it's a natural 
holes nano coated and they never get filled up so uh, you got to see in what respect you want to use them what the knowledge is given to you and you lot with your expertise will open a pandora box within next few months from what is on this table we see part of the thing but <clears throat> what you can do um, the process we can teach you in, in the long run, you do it before we do, you can use the wire system in your houses for energy supply for your own house. Now you've seen the process. You nano coat, you don't need no, okay, you might need, uh, um, what do you call it, a small silicon coating, but um, you nano coat your wires, and your wires are insulated from each other, but you have to nano coat in a specific way that the current doesn't jump between the two wires. But even that, it doesn't matter because it always stays stable. Then your wiring system in your house absorbs the energy within the wall and what comes off the ground and supplies the energy for your systems. So you don't need any power supply. I'm not telling you something fairy tale because we tested it. We know what we're talking yes, about. Yes, you are referring to create some sort of supercapacitor. They are supercapacitors, but millions of layers of it. Millions of layers of it. Nanotube, this is a real nanotube. And the diameter of the nanotube depends on the size of the copper wire you like to use. <laughs> and then it uh, depends what you want to purify, blood or water. You understand? It's the simplicity of it. It's just like yes. a sieve. Uh, uh, it's you just... explain that with viruses and all that stuff. Yeah, so it's like a sieve. What size is the, big of, the size of the whole of a sieve? You want the water to go through it or you want sand to go through it? The technology with this video is opened up beyond. I think that uh, it's very clear. Um, from now on, we'll see the power of the technology. And with it, we'll, we'll enforce the world peace. The people who signed the World Peace Treaty, now this is the time to, to sit by your signed signature. See if you can use it and stick to what you said, that your technology will be used for peace only. The guy who wants to help in Bangladesh, you have a free run. You've been asking, give us the technology. No, you have it in, you have it in full, but put it this way, the difference between me and you is that I've been working with it 40 years. And you have, you're just a bit behind me in development, but soon you'll pass me. Get out on the internet, get out uh, of the Mr. Keisha, I still have. Pardon? I can hear you. I have a question uh, about... Uh, I have a question about the layering on the, the copper wire. Uh, because you are collecting energy, uh, how do you relate to the potential built up is it by the number of layering you have on the wire, or is it the length of the wire? The maximum you get as long as we can research is 1.2 volts per wire. 10 meter long or 10 millimeter long. Oh. You understand? Yeah, the, okay. other thing, the other thing you will understand, understand is that, yeah, the other thing you will understand, you cannot weld solder or Anyway, fuse nano coated materials together. You try, you'll have a laughing time. Uh, the nano layers cannot be soldered together, they cannot be welded together because it's exactly like marbles, huh? They slide over each other. Hmm? The layers slide, and then when you do it, then if you crush it, it becomes like a diamond then that's, that's your another problem. So you have to find a way of connecting nano layer coated together if you're going for energy production, which we have done and we've shown it. 
you got to look at other presentations you see in it. We, I, I, I have a very clear, clear, clear message to to the to the people who listen and to the people who are in other games of defense and the rest. It's very simple. The game is over. The game of defense and military, the way it's been done, is over, and now everybody has the same knowledge. Um, you cannot, as the say, as as you can create magnetic gravitational field of cesium, you can create gravitational magnetic field of the nuclear warheads. Empty cups cannot do much damage. You understand? So, a lot of world, world governments can claim they have a nuclear warhead, no problem. We set the system out in the, in the distance, there is no material to be, to be a nuclear warhead. I said that the governments, world leaders will come to understand, the game of the war games is finished. It's over, it's done with. You, the way you extract uranium from the ground and the system we showed, you just make the gravitational magnetic field of uranium. Um, somebody is started running a link on the forum regarding measurement of gravitational fields, which is running currently. Read the paper, read the, you understand very easily how to measure your magnetic gravitational fields. This guy has done a, has done a marvelous job. You want the data? Get it from him. Ask him to give you the measurement of the, the professor. You know what I'm talking about. This on the forum link. He's done gravitational magnetic measurements. And some of you said you read the paper. Well, read the paper now in a different way. Then um, you can empty all the nuclear warheads around the world in a matter of a few weeks. There is no war. When you, uh, there, there is a big problem. Security has to be there. But the threat of being superpowers shouldn't be. We need the world, you know, what you call the world police force, not to be in the hand of these crazy people. But we don't need a military hardware to protect imaginary lines, what we call the land, or robbing another nation to put some more yellow metals in somewhere that we are bigger. Now with this technology, as you do more tests, you'll find out you absorb the cesium. Now, adjust your system. Create gold. From today, with what we released, gold has no value. And very soon, you will see the difference. The people will understand the way you can create gravitational magnetic field of the cesium, or hydrogen, or water. In a very short time, the first team of scientists will do the same thing with gold. So, I want to know, as I said, if you go back on some of my, my talks before, we tell to the governments who are trying to empty Central Bank of some nations, how much gold you want back there tomorrow morning. We can extract as much as you like from the fresh air. This is the message from this table. I said to people, we're going to change the scene. Mr. Cashier, I'm very... We've done it. Go ahead. Ask a question. A very um, punctual questions, uh, question. Uh, in the video you released, uh, you have cesium or plutonium into the whatever water and environment, and you create the nano material to trap it. But in order to create the physical material, let's say gold, it's uh, the same. We don't need it around. To the dynamic reactors. No, we can do it with the dynamic reactors, of course, but. Uh, uh, you can create the condition to attract layers on top of these layers, if you know how to do it. Uh, the, the, the difference... The In other words, you, you start with a nano material of gold. Okay, let me explain to you. Let me, no, I think, I think, 
Now, let me explain to you something very interesting. <coughs> you, you, you have a totally different concept of creation. Totally different concept of creation. I tell you exactly to bring your mind to understand what I've given to you today. I explain it to you in a very simple way. Look at your own skin. You wash your skin and the skin layer comes off. Yeah? And a new layer is coming from underneath up. You don't go and buy a skin and stick it on top. This is the wrong mentality and attitude which is built in our lives. We paste things on top, we say it's got a cover, we put a jacket on, we have a clothing. You missed one thing in the whole process. This is, a, this is what you did not understand, I'm trying to explain to you, I think you missed the biggest point in the whole lot. With a production of nano layers, the layering does not come from outside sitting on it, it's the material internally growing out from the skin of the material underneath of the way your skin grows. You missed this point, I and mean, I think you, you, where does this nano layer comes from? It's one layer is sealed, if you put one paint of brush on, it's finished. But when you create from underneath, like your own skin, you can take whatever you like from the top. Look at the structure, you missed this point. This, this, this is, that's what I said, everything in that tape, has to be looked at the way it is, not the way you've been taught. Your skin grows from underneath up, from your flesh, come up. And when it gets to the top, it becomes powderish, huh? You rub it off and it comes off your skin, that's why we shed the skin day and night as we walk. For the first time, with this, what I showed you, you create the same condition. The, the layers are built from the skin up, not from top to the bottom. If it's a nano copper oxide on the top and it's 20,000 layer, where did it come from? Where is the first layer? This is, this is what you've got to understand. If you take your copper wires, for example, and then dip it in, a, as I said, leave it in the moisture of the same sodium, what do you call it, caustic. If you uh, put the material immediately into the water and wash it with the water, you will see a very strange property. You will see copper oxide oozing through the skin out, because now you have touched with water the bottom layer which is next to the metal, and you are oxidized it. So it's coming through the hole and gaps between the marbles, huh? This is what you, you, you miss the biggest punch, that's why I said you see a tape, I can speak about all my lifetime about what's on this tape and you learn something new. The layering comes from the skin up, not from the top to the bottom. Once the layer is made on the top, what else can you do with that one underneath? How are you going to reach it to make it? Because of the hole and gaps and the solid material, the division, that's what I told you, to leave it for 24 hours. The, the material seeps through the gaps within the marbles to the metal, makes a new layer. The new layer is still gap and holes, so it makes another new layer. The, the, the Napoleon cake is not made from the top, it's made from underneath up. You understand? So now, what condition you want to be the bottom line, to create yes. a condition of gold, or you want a condition of the hydrogen? You understand? The game yes. of technology has changed. The game of science has changed. From today with this tape, and I hope you people can release this workshop today, don't wait for a week edit it as fast as you can and put it on YouTube, as many places that the governments cannot destroy it. There are, uh, there are active people around yes, trying there is to downloaded. Yeah, don't, don't edit it, let it, it be the way it is. 
Yeah, and distribute it around any scientific organization, anybody you know. Because from today, the knowledge, this knowledge has to belong to everybody and not one group like we sit here. This is important. This is one of the important things with this position. Some other questions? I think uh, Ukaku is now in go to meeting and uh, she wanted to say something. Vince? Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you very much indeed for uh, workshop. I already have several you know, feedback from the Japanese audience. Yes. And, uh, and, and also I deeply apologize for the technical you know, problem today. But this is something we can improve for the next opportunity. And then uh, I'm going to upload the, the, your YouTube video with the Japanese subtitle from today. And I hope we can get more like a small workshop group from now on, more regularly. You are so, responsible for <laughs> Japanese. Uh, you, are, you are responsible for the Japanese workshop from now on. So yeah, that was a good taste of what, how, what's going to happen in the future. You're welcome. Thank you very much for your hard work, here, Coco and Rick, and everybody else. Thank Any you other much. questions? So, Mr. Kesh, uh, yes. Uh, we, will, we will try to do a torrent to the video that was downloaded today, so it can be distributed like worldwide without any hindering. So yeah. we'll hope that in this way it cannot be blocked at all. I hope so, because we know there are moves from certain governments. Uh, when I tell you this, because we received a telephone call from a government yesterday. Uh, we know what they are doing and how they're operating, and they, they thought this, this, uh, this workshop will not go ahead. But uh, I do not shake and shiver just because somebody sneezes. Uh, so uh, we, you have to allow it to be distributed as fast as possible. And maybe, or not maybe, we have to increase the workshops when the knowledge seekers are here in a couple of weeks to one or two a week to answer everybody at the same time or be able to do workshops and it can be loaded in different places, but all on the YouTube channels. Rick is back. Yeah, who else is? I can, I, I can hear you, yes. There is no more questions. Uh, oh. Thank you very much indeed. Um, we, we got to, what do you call it? Uh, please put this up straight away. And if you can put it as a YouTube, not a, up, another streamline. If it can be done. Thank you. Bye. Goodbye. Thank you, Mr. Kesh. Thank bye, you. bye. 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 Yeah, bye. Thank you very much Thank for you. everything. Bye. Bye. bye.